and gentlemen, please raise your attention to center field and welcome to NSU, a company, uh, excuse me, alumni who are serving as New face among the captains and will start at the right guard position. Really good to see number 74, Chris Zirkel, back in action. Chris Zirkel seeing his first action of the year. He is representing Northwestern along with O'Shea Jackson and Juan Schwartz. Christian Watson is our lead official tonight. He is getting the captain set where they need to be, and let's hear from Mr. Watson. As soon as the PA announcement finishes. There are four captains representing Houston Baptist, three for Northwestern State. We also have uh, three folks from the U.S. Army that are here, and one of those folks will be flipping the coin for us. It is uh, in the mid-70s here. As we approach kickoff, we are expected to get into the low 60s by the time we are done. I tell you what, folks, if you could bottle up the weather we have right now and uh, have it for every football game, that would be the way to go. And Patrick, as you've mentioned, it's homecoming, and you can just feel the excitement is ratcheted up a notch down here on the field. Because of that homecoming, you've got folks that uh, may only make it back to campus once a year. They work far away, they live far away, and they always look for that homecoming game, circle their calendar, and make their plans to come back and visit Northwestern State on that homecoming. No doubt about that. All right, Tony. Welcome, Captains. Houston Baptist to the visiting team, Toss is yours. Southland logo is heads. NCAA logo is tails. Tails. Tails is the call. Flip the coin. Colonel Sweeney. Colonel Sweeney from the U.S. Army flips the coin. It is tails. Houston Baptist won the coin toss. They decided to defer. There you go. So uh, Northwestern will get the football to start the ball game. And they will be led by the first-time starter, Kenny Sears, 6'2", 215, the redshirt freshman from Covington, Louisiana who will see his first game action of his career as a Northwestern State Demon. Again, Caleb Fletcher was due to start this game, but uh, due to a, a disciplinary issue, he will not start. We do not know yet how many, uh, how long he will be out for this game, but we do expect him to play. Uh, the running back is Jared West, just, uh, just under 500 yards rushing for him, 5'10", 187, the junior from New Orleans. Jazz Ferguson, the leading receiver in the league, 6'5", 220, the redshirt junior from St. Francisville, Louisiana. Quan Shorts, 6'2", 195, the junior transfer from Humble, Texas. Jalen Watson, 6'1", 191, the senior from Los Angeles. Kalen Meggs, the tight end, 6'1", 243, the senior from Richton, Mississippi. Across the front line, left to right, Jonathan Hubbard, 6'4", 292, the redshirt junior from Kilgore, Texas. Left guard, Frank Boudreaux, 6'4", 294, the redshirt senior from Murphy, Texas. Center, Kenny Sheldon, 6'2", 281, the redshirt freshman from Houston, Texas. Making his first start of the year, Chris Zirkel, 6'3", 296, the senior from League City, Texas. Zirkel, who was the uh, leader of this offensive line the last couple of years back, he will play the final four games and then redshirt and play again next year. And right tackle is Dustin Burns, 6'4", 301, the redshirt junior from Beaumont, Texas. 3-3 stack alignment for Houston Baptist across the front line. Andre Walker, a junior from Slidell. Perrin M, a junior transfer from Upland, California. And Jonathan Graham, a senior from DeSoto, Texas. The, uh, the kickoff is fielded at the five-yard line by Ryan Reed. He will make it out just across the 25 before he slung backwards. The three linebackers for Houston Baptist, Langston Tunson in the middle, the sophomore from Humble, Texas, Caleb Johnson, sophomore from San Diego, California, and Kyle Bowling, the senior from Katy, Texas. Corners, Derek Broussard, the senior from Beaumont, Texas, and Raphael Lewis, the senior from Elk Grove, California. The nickelback is Coy Miller. He is a sophomore from Fort Worth, Texas. The strong safety, Ethan Beak, a sophomore from Katy, Texas. Free safety is Patrick Wolf, the sophomore from Santa Mom. Kenny Sears getting his first game action. Getting the start today. Three receivers right, one to the left, first and 10 at his own 26-yard line. Has Jared West to his right, brings Quan Shorts across the formation in motion, then back to slot right. Quick look to the outside, pass is caught by Shorts, who stumbles and falls for a loss of two. As he was trying to cut up, he had blocks from Bryson Bork and Jalen Watson on the outside, but uh, stumbled and fell as he tried to make the cut for a loss of two. So Kenny Sears completes his first pass, but loses two yards on it. And we are underway. Second and 12 for the Demons at their own 24. Two receivers left, one to the right. Sears from the shotgun. This will be an inside handoff. Good running room up the middle over left tackle for Jared West. West will get out to the 32-yard line, a gain of eight. And that'll bring up third down and four. But we have an immediate injury. That's right tackle Dustin Burns. 
the uh, junior from Beaumont, Texas, who is injured on the play, and that'll bring in Zach Perry. Zach Perry was going to play a lot in this game. Perry, 6'3", 253, the redshirt sophomore from Arlington, Texas. Burns is up and walking off the field, limping on that left leg. But uh, Zach Perry was going to play a good bit at right tackle and knock Dustin Burns into right guard. They were going to move Chris Zirkel from right to left a little bit just to try to see what he could do. Demons, by the way, convert 33% of their third downs. That is uh, ninth best in the Southland. They are facing the second to last third down conversion defense, 46% allowed. Sears looks quickly left, throws it, almost picked, but it's caught by Jazz Ferguson who makes a man miss and has the first down. Should have been a pick six, but it was a tip ball, and Jazz Ferguson makes a man miss to get it to the 42-yard line and a gain of 10. The football gods smiling on Kenny Sears in his first start. Very fortunate there that that was not brought back the other way. And Patrick, I talked to Kenny about 4 o'clock today, and I'm telling you, you would never know that he was getting ready to make his first start. I asked him, why are you or how are you so calm? He said, because I prepare the same way every week. First and 10 at their own 42-yard line. Quick look right, throw out to Quan Short. Shorts gets a block, cuts it up across the 45 to the 40. Eight, give him the 49-yard line, a gain of seven on the play. So HBU is a, uh, they used to be a little bit more of an aggressive gambling style defense, but they got burned so much that they've sort of switched styles in the middle of the year. And now uh, Brad Smiley, the offensive coordinator for the Demons, says you'll look out there and they'll be three, four, five deep, 10, 15 yards downfield. They're not going to get beat deep. Sears fakes inside, throws the slant wide open. Jalen Watson right down the middle of the field. Touchdown, Demons, 51 yards. And Kenny Sears runs over his left guard, Frank Boudreaux, celebrating the touchdown as the Demons take a 6 to nothing lead. His first pass went for minus 2. His last went for 51 and a score. Brad Laird was out to greet him as he came to the sideline. Well, and here's the other issue, Tony. It is not a guarantee that Caleb Fletcher will play in this game if Kenny Sears plays well. And that's the major issue right now. Again, it was a minor violation of team rules. It wasn't anything major. And so he was missing the start. But if Kenny Sears plays well, there's no guarantee that Caleb Fletcher comes back in this game. And that's what... Kenny Sears just did a 51-yard touchdown strike to Jalen Watson right across the middle on the quick slant. Demons take a 7-0 lead. We'll take a break, come back with more after this on the Demon Sports Network. will fill the ball down to the 19-yard line. Ball with CP Autumn leaves nursing and rehabilitation, caring for those you love, located in Winfield. Kickoff return from the six-yard line by Ladarius Dickens. He gets stuck by Jamar Dowson at the 19-yard line. Offense for the HBU Huskies, led by Bailey Zappi. The sophomore from Victoria, Texas, has thrown for nearly 1,900 yards, 18 touchdowns this year. His running back is Drashawn Miniweather, though there's no back in the backfield right now. It's three receivers right, two to the left. Quick throw to the outside is caught. It's just a bubble screen out there before uh, the receiver is taken down at the 25-yard line. That was his number one target, Jareth Stearns, the freshman from Midlothian, Texas, over 400 yards receiving and four TDs. HBU moves faster than any other offense in the league. They're already snapping it again. The slant is incomplete. The receiver fell down. 
They were looking over the middle for Nick Sexton, the junior transfer from San Diego. David Racine on the outside, the senior from Round Rock, Texas. We mentioned Jareth Stearns and Terry Tillman, the junior transfer from Dalton, Illinois, are the wide receivers on uh, now third down and four. Third and four for HBU at their own 25. They are the number one third down conversion team in the conference at 43%. They'll fake the uh, call and look over to the sidelines. Zappy ready to go. Three receivers right, one to the left. Drops, looks left immediately. Hit as he throws. It is caught in the flat by his tailback. He will have the first down and more across the 40-yard line and out to the 42. Well, he, Obina Ioma hit Zappy as he made the throw, but Zappy was able to complete it out in the flat for Ladarius Dickens, his tailback, the sophomore from Rowlett, Texas. Except for the long gain, that was just what defensive coordinator Mike Lucas wants. Another, on the outside. another bubble screen to the outside caught by Stearns, and, and uh, Ryan Reed is immediately there to greet him. The Demon defense is a 4-2-5 alignment across the front line. Zach Krolchik, 6'4", 260, senior from Conroe, Texas. Damian Thompson, 6'2", 311, sophomore from Gadsden, Alabama. O'Shea Jackson, 6'3", 255, the junior transfer from Arlington, Texas. And Obi Ioma, 6'2", 224, the senior from Grand Prairie, Texas. Middle linebacker Blake Stevenson, 6'1", 212, junior transfer from Deer Park, Texas. Weak side backer, the number one tackler, Quindarius Whitley, 6'2", 211, the junior transfer from Inverness, Mississippi. Second and 12, this will be an inside handoff over right tackle. Cutting it back up is Nick Sexton out of the backfield. And uh, he will get, excuse me, that was Stearns out of the backfield. He'll pick up six yards and bring up third down and seven now for HBU. Demon Corners, Malik Sanye, 6'185", the redshirt sophomore from Friendswood, Texas, and Rashawn Crony, 6'168", the senior from Pahokee, Florida. Star safety is Hayden Bourgeois, 5'11", 184, the sophomore from Crowley, Louisiana. Rover is Ryan Reed, 6'193", the junior from St. Francisville. Free safety, Nick Ford, 5'11", 201, the junior from DeSoto, Texas. Third and seven, just shy of midfield. Straight drop for Zappi, pressure comes, throws to the deep middle, that pass is caught. A terrific catch by Stearns as Ryan Reed was draped all on him, but Stearns was able to hold on for the first down at the Demon 41-yard line. HBU, as I mentioned, they move incredibly fast. They're ready to go. They pump fake twice. Now look to the deep middle. That pass is dropped by his intended receiver on the right side. That was Terry Tillman who dropped it. And that'll bring up second and 10. The front line for HBU, Sterling Savell, the junior from Mansfield, Texas. Tuita Chapman, the junior transfer from El Dorado Hills, California. Cody Hooks at center, the senior from Willis, Texas. Hikoti Chapman, his, the Tuita Chapman's brother, uh, the junior transfer from El Dorado Hills, California. And the right tackle is Francis Bongwalanga, the senior from London. Second and 10 from the Demon 41. Demons lead seven to nothing, four minutes gone here in the first half. Three receivers now to the right side. This will be a handoff over left tackle, trying to find a lane. A little bit of a hole there before Blake Stevenson, the middle linebacker, closes it up. Ladarius Dickens with the carry. He ran it 20 times last week for 95 yards against SFA as the Huskies fell to the uh, Lumberjacks 42-14. Patrick waiting to get an official word, but Dustin Burns has headed to the locker room. All right, third down and seven now. Demons showing blitz from the left side of the HBU offense. They were showing a, a linebacker, yeah, two linebackers actually from the left side, so the protection gets adjusted for HBU. Again, the blitz comes, Zappy throws. It's batted at the line of scrimmage, then a flag comes flying in from the umpire, which usually indicates a holding on the offense, but uh, that was tipped at the line of scrimmage and knocked away. HBU is backing up. This would be fourth and seven from the 38, and instead HBU is going to go backwards. Number 21 and 51, 15-yard penalty, May third down. Well, yeah, you definitely take the 15-yarder. It, it, if it was a five-yard penalty, they'd probably decline it and go and leave them fourth and eight. Fourth and seven, instead they take the 15 yard penalty and it brings up third and 23. From all the way back at the 42 yard line. Demons will obviously play soft here. We'll see if that defensive line can get to Bailey Zappi who was sacked eight times last week. Zappi drops, gonna throw the screen, lobs it ahead, had linemen all downfield. Ball comes free and the Demons have it. Jamar Valson on the strip by Malik Sonye. 
recovered by Northwestern State. Third down. Malik Sanye stripped it, Jamar Valson recovered it, and the Demons take over. This HBU team is minus six in turnover margin. That's second to last in the conference. The Demons, meanwhile, are plus eight. That's number one in the league. Defensive coordinator Mike Lucas said before tonight's ball game, uh, he's very aware of Houston Baptist turnover issues. Uh, he's, that is something they focus on every week, Northwestern does, but really a little closer attention to detail this week because he felt the opportunity would be there. Well, it wasn't going to be anywhere near a first down, but HBU was going to be able to punt. They're waiting to, to get the official word that it was a catch and fumble, and now they do. First and 10 right at midfield for the Demons. Kenny Sears is back out there. Two receivers left, one to the right. This will be an inside handoff. That will be Stadford Anderson up the middle for three. Anderson, 6'1", 210. The sophomore from Baton Rouge has run it 40 times for 165 yards and a touchdown. This is just about a perfect start for Northwestern. When you're playing a team that has not won a ball game all year, the last thing you want to do is let them hang around and feel like they've got a shot. You want to jump on them early. Second and seven, three receivers left, one to the right. Sears from the shotgun again. This will be another inside handoff. Anderson hit and dropped in the backfield. Middle linebacker Langston Tunson comes in and makes the tackle for loss. He now has 11 and a half tackles for loss this year. And that will mean the Demons will be facing third and nine. Their last third down, they Kenny Sears threw it into the flat. It got tipped by a defensive, uh, I think it was a linebacker. Jazz Ferguson came up with it and ended up getting a first down with it on his own efforts. So third and nine from just across midfield. Sears drops, good pocket. Now he's going to step and throw high and incomplete and almost Jazz Ferguson making a great diving catch as the unintended receiver. And so the Demon offense goes three and out on its second possession after recovering a fumble at midfield. And that'll bring in Parker Pastorello, number two punter in terms of average in the Southland Conference last week at UCA. Parker Pastorello, 5'11", 183, the junior from Mandeville, downed five punts inside the 20-yard line. Did a really nice job with that. Probably looking to do that again here. Going to rugby-style kick this one. Fair catch called for and made on the dive by Jarrett Stearns at about the 14-yard line. And that's where timeout on the field. Media. HBU will take over. We'll take a break. Demons lead 7 to nothing. 9.08 left to go first quarter. You're listening to the Demons Sports Network. Today, the College of Business and Technology recognized Southern Scripps, General Dynamics, Information Technology, Sharp Co. Hotels Group, and Beta Engineering with its 2018 Outstanding Business Award. Their generous contributions of time, talent, and other resources to NSU and the college make it possible for NSU students to obtain a world-class education, and we are extremely grateful. Joining them on the field is the President of Northwestern State, Dr. Chris Maggio, and Dean of the College of Business, Dr. Margaret Kilcoyne. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give these sponsors a big team and round of applause. Let New York Life secure your family's future. New York Life, the company you keep. Nettles Brown, the agent you trust. Family Farm and Garden located in Manny. Jimmy Grange, Natchitoches, Ford Lincoln. Seven to nothing, NSU leads. 9.08 left to go first quarter. HBU will take over first and 10 at its own 14-yard line. So for Parker Pastorello, his 17th punt down inside the 20. Two receivers left, one to the right, tight end to the right. As Bailey Zappi is working in the shotgun, moves the back, Rashawn Miniweather to his right. Inside handoff over left guard, trying to turn the corner and does before Shamar Bartholomew submarines him down at the 20-yard line. That is a gain of six for Drashawn Miniweather, who's missed the last two games for HBU due to concussions, something the Demons know a little bit about. Demons are missing eight guys with concussions in this game. 
Patrick offensive lineman Dustin Burns is back on the sidelines. It is a knee injury, but perhaps not too severe. We're told there's a chance he may get back in. Zappi looks quickly right, throws quickly right, pass is caught, and then immediately sandwiched between Hayden Bourgeois and Deron Littleton is Jareth Stearns. He gets the first down at the 26-yard line, a gain of six, first and ten. Three receivers right, one to the left. Demons playing just one safety right now. Inside handoff, good play from the back side. No, actually, sorry, Zappi kept around the right side before he was taken down by Blake Stevenson, who stays down. Stevenson tried to get back up, but then uh, went back down after he tackled Zappi for a gain of seven. Bailey Zappi's run it 75 times this year for 101 yards. Keep in mind, he was sacked eight times last week and 24 times for the season. So uh, that tells you just how good his positive runs have been because sacks obviously count as negative rushing yards. Uh, by the way, some scores from around the Southland. Lamar takes down Stephen F. Austin 24-17. Lamar, one of the hottest teams in the league right now. The previous hottest team in the league got walloped. Incarnate Word loses to Nichols 48-21. And Sam Houston defeats Southeastern Louisiana 28-25. Central Arkansas and McNeese down in Lake Charles just underway. So Blake Stevenson pops up and Blake. is again limping off the field under his own power. Yeah, Blake has been really solid at that middle linebacker position. Started the night fourth on the team in tackles mm -hmm. with 31. To, uh, he's just been a, a guy, he was a junior college transfer, but he's been a guy that defensive coordinator Mike Lucas can really rely on. He doesn't have to worry too much about Blake Stevenson. This HBU team, one in six overall. They are 0 and five in conference play. Their only win over Division II Southwest Baptist in game one. This will be the Keeper right up the middle for Zappi, and he has got all day to run. 30, 20, 15, 10, 5, touchdown. Bailey Zappi straight up the middle of the field. He faked the fly sweep action around the outside and then kept it straight up the middle for the touchdown as uh, no one was anywhere near him in the middle of the field. It was man defense, so everyone had their head turned and Bailey Zappi went 68 yards on the ground for the score. And the book on Zappi was he's a very good runner, but typically he runs to throw. He doesn't run to run like he did there. Well, he ran to run, and it was uh, 68 yards untouched up the middle for the touchdown. The extra point is good. The extra points and kicking game for this, uh, this HBU team is going to be an interesting thing to watch because they are missing their top two kickers who have been dismissed from the team. We'll take a break, seven all. Just Ladies and gentlemen, please direct your attention to the 25 yard line for a special presentation to our game day title sponsors. McDonald's, BOM Bank, Rhodes Realty and Rhodes Properties and Development. The strong sponsor support of these dedicated partners is vital to the success of NSU Athletics. Let's give our game day title sponsors a big team and round of applause. Ladies and gentlemen, also please look to the south end zone for today's Super One First Kick Kid, David, as he attempts a kick into our end zone. Let's hear it for David. And it is good. Thank you, David, for sponsoring today's Super One First Kick Kid. Julian Foy Motors in Manny. We have it all at Julian Foy Motors. Swepco, stay safe, keep away from power lines. Visit swepco.com. Sheriff Victor Jones in the Natchitoches Parish Sheriff's Office. So the Demons on their first drive went five plays, 74 yards, a minute 50 off the clock for the touchdown. The 51 yard pass from Kenny Sears to Jalen Watson and then Bailey Zappi on the second drive from HBU. He goes 68 yards right up the middle of the field. The quarterback takes it in for the touchdown. Four plays, 86 yards on the drive. It took a minute and nine off the clock. And we are tied at seven apiece. And now the question is, is it going to be Caleb Fletcher or Kenny Sears? And I believe it's going to be Caleb Fletcher into the game for the first time. So apparently two series was the call for Brad Laird. 
on the uh, discipline for the minor disciplinary action against Caleb Fletcher. So Fletcher comes in 5'11", 187, the sophomore from Mesquite, Texas. Fletcher last week, 16 of 29, 187 yards and a touchdown. Kenny Sears, by the way, currently sits four for five for 66 yards and a touchdown. Two receivers to either side, first and 10 from the 25. Fletcher fakes the inside handoff, throws the bubble screen out to Bryson Bork, who hurdles his own blocker. That was Jazz Ferguson and gets five to the 30-yard line for Bork, his 10th catch of the year. Patrick, offensive coordinator Brad Smiley has convinced the playbook for tonight, as you would expect with the quarterback situation. He says, because we've got the guys we have playing quarterback tonight, our goal is to keep it simple offensively. Second and five from the 30. Inside zone handoff right up the middle. Jared West, he'll be stopped just a half a yard shy of the first down at the 34 and a half yard line. Where we'll bring up third down in less than a yard. The Demons are one for two on third downs. Coming in, 33% conversion percentage on third down. While HBU gives up 46%. This is two of the, uh, these are the two worst third down conversion defenses. The Demons give up 50%, that's last. HBU 46%, that's second to last. Third and less than a yard. Inside, nope, they're gonna throw outside to Jazz Ferguson. Ferguson will have the first down across the 40 to the 42 yard line. Alfred King had the coverage. He was giving Ferguson plenty of room. And Jazz Ferguson makes the grab. 40 catches, 762 yards for Jazz Ferguson. He leads the league with those 762 yards, and he's the only player in NSU history to have five 100-yard games in a season. This will be the inside handoff around the left side west. He's bottled up and taken down for a loss. See where they give him forward progress. Boy, they do not give him very good forward progress. A loss of five on the play. As West initially, he was stopped around a yard or two behind the line of scrimmage, but kept fighting and ultimately because he kept fighting, when he went down, he was three yards further back. And so now second down and 15, the Demons have really struggled running the football this year. They are last in the Southland, averaging under 85 yards rushing a game, and they have less than 10 after that loss of five right there. Fletcher will drop on second and 15, quarterback draw. This will get a lot of those yardage back. Fletcher nearly to first down yardage as he stopped at midfield. And a gain of 13 it brings up third and two. That's the one dimension that Caleb Fletcher has that none of the other quarterbacks have. His quarterback run game is really good. The training staff continues to work on Blake Stevenson, the middle linebacker, paying special attention to his right ankle. Third and two from just shy of right at midfield, actually. HBU showing blitz up the middle. Demons were dummy calling. Now they're gonna change the play. Three different people signaling in the play. Caleb Fletcher steps up and talks to the offensive line. Two receivers right, one to the left. Jazz Ferguson on an island out there with about seven yards of separation. Kind of surprised they didn't give it to him. Instead, it's right up the middle to West and he's got the first down. And a gain of nearly four for Jared West. Run game is gonna be very important for the Demons. This is the second worst rushing defense in the league as Houston Baptist gives up over 212 yards per game. Demons would do well to run the football effectively. Last week, Stephen F. Austin ran it for 220 yards a game, and they were averaging less than 100 yards rushing coming in. First and 10 for the Demons at the plus 46 now. Two receivers to either side, shotgun for Fletcher. Inside zone read, Stadford Anderson finds a hole over the right guard, and he's got nearly six. They'll give him five to the 41-yard line. Four and a half left to go first quarter. We're tied at seven. Demons moving quickly. By the way, Chris Zirkel has played every snap so far. The senior coming back off of that shoulder injury. Two receivers to either side, second and five. Anderson gets the call again, picks his way over right tackle, and he surges forward for the first down to the 35-yard line. He got seven. Good to see this, though, Tony. We have not seen the Demons ability to sustain the run game. Granted, they've been playing against some of the better defensive fronts in the league, but it's nice to see a little sustained run game. Yeah, it makes a big difference when you're not playing a top 15 team. Absolutely, three receivers left, one to the right. Fletcher in the shotgun, first and 10. This will be handoff over right tackle. Good running room for Anderson, makes a man miss, cuts to the outside, and he goes down inside the 20 to the 18 yard line, a run of 17 for Stadford Anderson. 
And when you say makes a man miss, that is the game plan for this Northwestern State offense. Houston Baptist is a very poor tackling ball club. They want to try and make them miss, and they think they can. Three receivers to the left, one to the right. It's first and 10 for the Demons at the HBU 18. Only five guys in the box. That's automatic run. Anderson gets the call, and he's swallowed up in the backfield. Nowhere to go. Caleb Johnson, the linebacker, comes in to make the stop. That'll be no gain, maybe even a loss of a yard for Stadford Anderson, who will come out of the ball game, and Jared West will replace him. West has been the bell cow running back for the Demons. 94 carries for 471 yards. That's seventh most in the Southland. And you met his family today, right? I did. I met his parents, and uh, he they, I'll tell you what, comes from good stock. He's a good kid. I'm a big fan of Jay West. There's no doubt about it. Second and 10 from the 18. Low snap. Ball's kicked by West. He'll just pick it up and try to run with it. He'll get what he can, and that's basically a loss of a yard as Kenny Sheldon is a little bit slow to get up. The Demon center, but he pops up. And it's now third down and 11 from the 19-yard line. 2.38 left to go first quarter. Game tied at seven. Demons driving, but face third and 11 from the 19. Jazz Ferguson has not been in on this drive. It's been Kendrick Price in his place, wide left. Meanwhile, Jalen Watson, Bryson Bork, Quan Shorts line up to the right side of the formation. That's the wide side of the field. Third and 11 from the 19. Fletcher may have to go to the air here. Blitz coming from the right side of the line. They're trying to throw the screen, and Fletcher just throws it away over the head of, J of Jared West. You don't always have to sack the quarterback to affect the quarterback. Number 21 was in the area. Make a play pass. Fourth down. So they were trying to set up the screen. Could not get it to work to Jared West as the blitz came, and West was unable to get outside. And that'll bring up a uh, kicking situation. Austin Fendrick, who hit his only field goal last week, will step in. Three for eight overall for Austin Fendrick, the left-footed kicker. This will be from the left hash and will be a 36-yard attempt. That would tie his career high. Snap back, hold down, kick on the way. It has the leg, and it is no good. Wide left. Didn't miss by much, but uh, did miss wide left. And so the Demons turn it over on downs as Austin Fendrick moves to three on the field. for nine. Media. The field goal with no good. Three for nine for Austin Fendrick on the season at the field goal unit. We'll take a Dr. Heather Honoree Goltz is the 2018 recipient of the Jimmy D. Long Senior Louisiana Scholars College Distinguished Alumni Award. This award is presented annually to a graduate of the Louisiana Scholars College who has been extraordinarily successful in their career and also exemplified the life of public service and commitment exhibited by the late Louisiana Senator Jimmy Long. Dr. Goltz, an associate professor of social work at the University of Houston downtown, has a long list of accomplishments. Beyond her teaching experience, Experience and honors. She has an extensive research background, particularly in support of patients with cancer and gen excuse me, genital urinary conditions. Dr. Golds has also been very involved in advocacy groups, not only for cancer patients, but for health issues for minority groups. Louisiana Scholars College is very proud to count Dr. Heather Honoree Golds as one of our distinguished alumni. French Market Express, University Highway at I-49, home of the Louisiana Yam Cake, Cane River Bar and Grill, and Cross Financial, sponsors of the Demon Huddle. First and 10 HBU at their own 20. Demons and Huskies tied at seven. Inside handoff right over right guard, not much there. Great work inside by the Demon defense. Damian Thompson leading things in the middle. The big sophomore from Gadsden, Alabama, was able to push Drishawn Miniweather back for, actually, excuse me, that was Ladarius Dickens back for no gain. To bring up second and 10. So far, both teams pretty even. Demons have 20 plays for 131 yards. HBU has 14 plays for 133 yards, but 68 of that was on the run by Bailey Zappi. Second and 10 from the 20. Back goes out of the backfield in motion to wide left with two other receivers. So three receivers to the left, one to the right. Zappi looks left. 
Now he's going to escape out to his right, throw to the middle, pass is caught, a couple of guys miss, all the way back across the field looking to turn the corner, and he does. That's Jarrett Stearns into NSU territory and out of bounds at the 34-yard line of NSU. That's a 46-yard pitch and catch. It was about a five-yard pass, and the rest of it was all Jarrett Stearns on the run. Patrick Jason Drury, the head athletic trainer at Northwestern, passing along some good news. Blake Stevenson has a, a right ankle injury, but uh, he thinks he'll be able to get back in the ball game. All right. HBU moving the ball effectively. They are a great offense this year. They average over 400 yards a game and 32 points a game. Two receivers right, one to the left. Two back split to either side of Zappi on first and 10 from the Demon 34. Straight drop, play action. Pressure comes. Zappi escapes out to his right. Under pressure, he's just going to toss it out of bounds. No one was over there, but the ball went past the line of scrimmage, and the quarterback was out of the pocket. To no grounding. Patrick, I think it's pretty safe to say that most teams, if they put up the points that Houston Baptist puts up, they would have at least one win? Well, they have one win. They just don't have any conference wins. Uh, yeah, they put up 49 on, on Southwest Baptist, yeah. but they've put up 34, 13, 27, 35, 52, and 14, and didn't win any of those games. Uh, that's tough. That's rough. Second and 10 at the Demon 34. NSU with, a, with six guys across the line of scrimmage. Pistol formation for the Huskies. Miniweather comes to the right of Zappi, who drops. Big blitz comes. Zappi's going to throw the fade up the left sideline. It is caught. Touchdown. Well, Malik Sanye just lost track of David Racine. And never turned around. And uh, as he was just running, it almost like he stopped. Malik Sanye was just running step for step with Racine. It looked like he was in great position. And at the last second, Sanye just stopped running, and Racine ran right underneath it for the touchdown. And that was on the near sideline. And as soon as Zappi put the ball in the air, all of the Northwestern assistant coaches were yelling, ball, 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 ball. And they were very close in proximity to Sanye and the receiver. And one of the things Mike Lucas talks so much about is the Demons giving up big plays. And already we've seen multiple big plays from this Houston Baptist offense as the extra point is good from uh, Neri Enriquez, the true freshman from El Campo, Texas. And it is a 14-7 HBU lead already with 46, 34, and 68-yard plays in this first quarter of action. HBU, now granted, on pace is, is certainly not any indication, but right now HBU is on pace for 800 yards of offense as they've uh, gotten 213 yards of offense in 17 plays. They average, they're averaging 12 and a half yards per play right now. But that doesn't mean they're going to win. <laughs> no, well, as they've, they've shown us. Yeah, the, the, the major difference is the Demons are starting their number three quarterback or they started their number four quarterback in Kenny Sears, but now they have their number three quarterback in Caleb Fletcher. The quarterback depth chart right now is Caleb Fletcher, Kenny Sears, and true freshman Aaron Howell from right here at St. Mary's. So the, uh, the question is, now you've got Sears who started, went four for five for 66 yards with a 51-yard touchdown. Caleb Fletcher so far has come in, gone two for three for 13 yards. He's also run it twice for eight yards. Well, Patrick, a little bit about the decision that went into uh, cutting Clay Holgerson's season and career short. Uh, I was talking with Jason Drury, the head athletic trainer at Northwestern, and, uh, because someone had mentioned to me that it was an NCAA mandated rule that if you have two concussions in the same season, you're done for the season. He said, no, that is not correct. This is basically in consultation with the team doctors, with the player, and it's basically a guideline or a protocol that Northwestern has followed for the past few years, concussions becoming such a big part of the ball game, and you're always going to err on the side of caution, and rightfully so. Hey, Tony, hold yeah. on. We just had a review of something. Now, I don't know if the official's going to say anything, but he was over on the headset talking with the upstairs. Okay, continue. Sorry. The, he was on the headset. I thought he was about to tell us something. That's okay. Just the fact that they, they consulted with everybody and just thought it would be best that if uh, Clay, Clay Holgerson was put on the shelf for the rest of this year. And obviously, since he's a senior, his college career is over. I asked Brad Smiley, how did Clay handle the news and how is he handling it? He said he'll be fine. Uh, he'll probably get into coaching yeah. once he gets through with college ball. And uh, he'll probably go back to the Katy, Texas area where he's from. We certainly wish him the very best. And 
but you know he hates to be out here, but when you're talking about health and the rest of your life, right. you've got to err on the side of and, caution. And as we all know, brain injuries are such a, uh, such a very cautious, uh, so, you know, there's a cautionary tale around brain injuries right now in football. So certainly you want to be as careful as you can with that. Miles Ward from the goal line between the left side hash and numbers. He finds a little bit of a crease. He's still on his feet, spins down across the 30 to the 32-yard line. Uh, yeah, Clay Holgerson played for his father in high school. And, of course, everyone knows his uncle, Dana Holgerson, at West Virginia. So definitely a lot of coaching pedigree in the blood of uh, Clay Holgerson, that's for sure. By the way, your officiating crew for this one, Christian Watson Chris uh, is the referee, Chris Booker, the umpire. Kevin Kiley is the head linesman. Matt Stelgis, the line judge. Eric McNally, the field judge. Paul Soraka, the side judge. Nolan Dumas is the back judge. First and 10 for the Demons at their own 31-yard line. Trailing now 14-7. Two receivers to either side. Jazz Ferguson back into the ball game wide left. He's had two catches in this one, one off a tip. Fletcher looks immediately his way, now throws it into that hole in the two deep. Ferguson fumbles the football and uh, then knocks it out of bounds. He caught it. He was making a move up the sideline, fumbled it, and then reached up and just sort of batted it out of bounds so it couldn't be recovered by HBU. Smart play by Jazz Ferguson. He did make the catch for a gain of 14 and a first down. Ruling on the field is a catch. Oh, out of bounds. First down with Western State. So Jazz Ferguson with his third catch and now 31 yards for him. Jalen Watson has the big strike in this game. He had one, that 51-yard touchdown on the Demons' first drive from Kenny Sears. So first and 10 Demons at their own 44-yard line. Two receivers to either side. Fletcher in the shotgun. Fakes inside, throws the bubble screen out to Marquisian Chapman. Chapman stays on his feet through a tackle and finally is taken down at midfield after a gain of six. Tackle made eventually by nickelback Coy Miller, and that will end the first quarter of action. So the Demons got the quick 7-0 lead. Gave up a long touchdown run to the quarterback, Bailey Zappi, and then a long touchdown pass, and they trail 14-7 as we... Ladies and gentlemen, please direct your attention to the field where Northwestern State President Dr. Chris Maggio and Interim Vice President for the Student Experience, Ms. Francis Conine, are with this year's Miss Northwestern State University, Mallory McConathy of Stonewall, and Mr. Northwestern State University, and Tavius Robertson of Arcadia. McConathy is the daughter of Brent and Julie McConathy. She is a junior biology major. Mallory is a member of Sigma 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 Sorority, Purple Jackets, and Alpha Lambda Delta, Beta Beta Beta, and Blue Key Honor Societies. Mallory was also the 2017 Homecoming Honor Court Queen. Octavius is a senior elementary education major. He is the son of Anthony Robertson and Suzette Cato. And Octavius was the 2017 Homecoming Honor Court King. He also served as Secretary and Student Affairs Commissioner of the Student Government Association. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor to present to you your 2018 Mr. and Miss Northwestern State University. <laughs> Still Federal Credit Union joined the winning team and experienced what it's like to have a financial partner for life. Natchitoches Urgent Care, quality medical care without the wait at 307 Kaiser Avenue. Getting ready to start the second quarter. First quarter stats look like this. NSU 22 plays, 150 yards, nothing wrong with that. They've run it 12 times for 52 yards. They've thrown it for 98. However, Houston Baptist 17 plays for 213 yards in the first quarter. They've run for 89 and thrown for 124. Getting set to start the second quarter. Ball is at midfield, which is the easiest way to transition between quarters. <laughs> Means you just turn around. You don't have to run very far. No, it's, it's a lot worse when it's on the one and you go from one side of the field to the other. Demons will face second down and four at midfield when we get back to action. Kenny Sears started this game because Caleb Fletcher was uh, suspended for the start of this game due to a violation of team rules. It was a minor violation. Both guys are four for five right now. Sears threw for 66 yards in two drives. Fletcher is now at 32 yards. Two receivers left, two to the right, second and four from midfield. 
Inside handoff, Jared West will roll over a tackler and be a yard shy of the first down. It'll bring up third and one. The Demons are three for five on third downs, while HBU is two for three on third downs. A third and about a yard here. This is exactly what you want in terms of third down conversions. Pistol formation here with Fletcher in front of Jared West. Two receivers left, one right. Tight end is the up back, Kalen Meggs, to the left side of the formation. They're just going to throw the quick out pattern. That's caught by, Kay, uh, by the freshman, LeVar Gums, who has the first down. He needed one. He got about four. I mean, no one even moved. Jared West stood there. The entire offensive line just stood there as Fletcher reared up and threw it immediately to the freshman, Gums. That's his eighth catch on the year for the true freshman from Houston, Texas. This coaching staff likes Gums as well. Oh, he's a, Brad Smiley said from day one, we need to get him on the field and get him catches. He's already got two touchdown grabs this season. Two receivers left, one right, delayed blitz. Fletcher's gonna spin out all the way to the left. Here comes a flag. This is gonna be a holding penalty as Fletcher throws it at the feet of Marquisian Chapman. And the Demons are gonna be caught for a holding penalty. And will likely end up being first and 20 here from back across midfield. Holding, offense, number 70, 10 yard penalty, May's first down. Jonathan Hubbard was called for the holding penalty. Fletcher saw the delayed blitz coming over his left side, but actually the Demon offensive line picked it up. Jonathan Hubbard slipped out and then Boudreau, the left guard, popped back inside and picked up that delayed blitz, but Fletcher saw it too late. So he spun out to his left and when he did that, Hubbard, the left tackle, had no choice but to grab a hold of the defensive end to try to keep him from you know, hitting Fletcher immediately. So first and 20 for the Demons back at their own 46-yard line. The Demons are the second most penalized team in the league. Just under nine and a half penalties a game. They give up, uh, they average about 82 yards in penalties. Two receivers to either side. Fletcher looks immediately right, throws the out. That's caught and immediately hit Marquisian Chapman after a gain of four. Back to midfield, but Chapman was hit as soon as he made that grab. Hit hard, but held on. We've seen Chapman do that several times where he's hit hard on a short route, but hangs on to now second and 16 from right at midfield. We're a minute and a half into the second quarter of action. Houston Baptist leads 14-7. Jazz Ferguson and Marquisian Chapman wide left. LeVar Gums, the freshman, and Bryson Bork, the, the uh, senior, to the right. Fletcher in the shotgun. Five guys at the line of scrimmage for HBU. They'll bring four. Fletcher will escape out to his left, looking downfield somewhere. Now he's going to just take off and run for what he can, and then he's taken out of bounds hard right around the original line of scrimmage. He'll actually get a yard past that. And so it'll bring up third down and nine from the 43. If you're Northwestern, Patrick, one of the things you have to be careful of is not to press not to try to do too much because you feel that urge to do so you're playing a team that on paper is your easiest opponent in the last four ball games and all of a sudden you find yourself trailing 14-7 here early in the second quarter three receivers to the right one to the left that's jazz ferguson safety over the top of him as well as a man in press coverage third and nine Fletcher draw play to Jared West, right up the middle, big yardage for him inside the 35, inside the 25, into the 24 yard line. A gain of 19 for Jared West on the draw play. Beautiful freeze draw by the Demons. Basically, Caleb Fletcher holds, looks right like he's gonna throw it, and then late gives it off to West after the defensive linemen have come upfield. Quickly, here they go. West gets the call over right tackle, he'll drag a couple of guys forward and get three to the 21 yard line. But what a conversion on third and nine on a run of 19 to Jared West. You called it a freeze draw, yeah. put the word freeze in bold letters. Well, freeze draw is actually, uh, Dennis Franchoni made the freeze draw famous where basically everyone looks like it's a pass and they wait a long time before they finally hand the football off. That was a really long time. Second down and seven from the 21. Two receivers to either side. Fletcher drops, looks right. Going to throw the pass that's batted down at the line of scrimmage. And Greg Vincent, the 6'2", 265-pound junior from Deer Park, Texas, the defensive end, knocks it down. And that's the one major issue for Caleb Fletcher. Listed at 5'11", 187, may not be 5'11". But he can, if you can get your hands up in his face, you can knock the ball down. 
and sometimes he has trouble seeing things down the field if he doesn't have the right uh, lanes in front of him created by the offensive line. So now third down and seven from the 21. Three receivers go wide right. That's the wide side of the field. One left is Jazz Ferguson. Safety creeping to the middle. Ferguson's one-on-one. -on -one. Fletcher's going to roll right under pressure, throws it late. It is dropped. Was looking for Bryson Bork, who was immediately hit as he made the grab. It was going to be no gain or maybe even a loss on the play. And so Austin Fendrick, who earlier missed a 36-yard field goal, didn't miss it by much, but did miss it. He will trot onto the field to try what will be just about the same distance field goal, just a couple of yards behind that. It will be 38 yards on this one. Instead of the left hash, it will be the right hash. So we'll see if that helps Fendrick in any way on this 38-yard attempt. Good snap and hold, kick. That one's got plenty of leg, and it is good. Austin Fendrick hits from 38, and the Demons pay off their drive with points. 11.37 left to go in the first half of play. Time out of the field. Jeez. Houston Baptist leads 14 to 10. We'll take a break, come back with more after this on the Demon Sports Network. Yeah, Tony, you can talk. Please welcome tonight's guest coach, Dr. Amy Garcy. Dr. Garcy is an assistant professor in the College of Nursing. Thank you for being here tonight and helping coach our demons to victory. the Demons Unlimited Foundation would like to thank Coca-Cola, Atmos Energy, City of Natchitoches, and CPTEL for their support. Also want to thank the West Louisiana Ice Company and the Leesville campus of Northwestern State University. 14-10, the lead for Houston Baptist. The Demons' last drive, 11 plays, 48 yards. It took 346 off the clock, a 38-yard Austin Fendrick field goal, his fourth make of the year has cut the lead to 14 to 10. Kickoff will be fielded at the one yard line, left side numbers coming up the left side numbers, cutting around, you got a flag that comes flying in before Jared Stearns is taken down just across the 20. We'll see what the flag is, more than likely a blocking penalty of some kind against HBU. By the way, we mentioned it's homecoming. It's also reunion weekend for two of the best teams in NSU football history, the 1988 and 98. They go blocking the back. Return team, number 15. At the distance, goal. First down. That will be uh, either Corey Sinaceros or Derek Ray Jr. Don't know which one was on special teams, but he gets called for the, the block in the back. But the 90, 1988 and 98 Demon teams are being celebrated. Uh, Tony, you'll have Floyd Turner uh, on at halftime. He was a member of, uh, of those successful squads. Uh, as he was one of only two first team Southland, all Southland selections on that 88 squad. The 88 team went 10 and three to win NSU's first Southland football title. And the 98 team went 11 and three to match the most wins in school history and went to the FCS semifinals that year. So both of those squads on hand reuniting and their coach Sam Goodwin there with them. Zappi will drop, quick throw, that pass is caught to the outside before Kevin Ratliff will make the stop. It is a gain of around 10 on the quick out pattern. Both of those conference championship teams coached by Sam Goodwin. Sam was down on the field a good hour before the start of tonight's ball mm -hmm. game. And, you know, he's had some uh, back issues for a while, but he looks really, really good. And he said he was so excited to be here because it's homecoming, but also that special bond that he has with those two conference championship teams. And by the way, his quarterback, who is now the head coach of the Demons. Receiver in arc motion across. They fire it out there on the bubble screen at the 20, 25. That's Racine who had the touchdown grab. He's taken down eventually. 
by NSU's freshman safety, William Hooper, but not before he gains yardage to the 32-yard line. So back-to-back double-digit gains, and HBU has a first and 10 at their own 32-yard line. This Huskies offense is averaging over 12 yards a play right now as they have 224, actually, they're about to be at 230-plus yards. Zappi under immediate pressure, spins out of one, but not the second. Sack on the play, a loss of two. That was the uh, that was one of the demon youngsters, Khalil Sumlin, the sophomore from Shreveport out of Loyola College Prep. Sumlin getting in there for the sack. The demons average over two sacks a, go- a game. They have 16 on the season. And uh, SFA last week, had eight sacks of Bailey Zappi, and most of it was just with their defensive line. So second and 12 from the 30. Two receivers to either side, Zappi in the shotgun. Calls for the football, looking left. Pocket collapses, down he goes! Second sack in a row by the Demons. It was a late blitz from Blake Stevenson who got him. That's Stevenson's third sack of the year. And the Demons force HBU into third and long back at their own 24-yard line. It's third and 18. Even though that was a late blitz more times than not, Mike Lucas is only going to rush four. He feels like he can get pressure by rushing just those four. He told me he'd be disappointed if at halftime the Demons don't have some sacks. They've got two in a row here. And again, SFA had seven in the first half against HBU, most of them just from the defensive front. It's third down and 18 from back at the 24. Three receivers left, one to the right, one to snap it. Zappi just gets it off and drops. Pressure again. He rolls out to his right. He's going to reverse field. Taken down again. Jamard Valson got him. I don't think that will actually be a sack because he got back to the line of scrimmage. But in essence, Tony, it's three sacks in a row for the Demon defense. Huge, Patrick, because uh, you're trailing by four points. You're trying to get the momentum back. Defense can make plays like that. That can turn a ball game around. Well, and you knew Mike Lucas would have some adjustments to what he had seen in the first couple of drives. And that adjustment, he got some guys free. Houston Baptist has reported at number 64. All right, so uh, number five, it's either a corner, Coy Miller, or Terry Tillman, the wide receiver, reports in as number 64. And Hayden Bourgeois stands back at his own 35-yard line. Punt is away, high and short. Bourgeois calls for the fair catch and makes it at the 46-yard line. So all told, just a 30-yard punt for Tyler Blanchard, the redshirt freshman from Sugarland, Texas. So the original kicker and punter for Houston Baptist, Alec Chadwick, dismissed from the team for violation of team rules. And so it has been a kicker slash punter by committee for HBU. They've got Ned and Neri Enriquez handling the extra point duties. They've got a different kicker who is handling kickoffs. They've got Tyler Number Blanchard. They've got Tyler Blanchard who has uh, kicked a little bit. And they've got uh, David Dominguez on the roster as well. First and 10 Demons at their own 46-yard line. Two receivers right, one to the left. Play action inside. They're going to throw the out a little bit wide of his intended receiver, Kendrick Price. It was one-on-one coverage with with Alfred King, about a nine-yard out, and uh, that one just a little bit thrown wide from Caleb Fletcher. Patrick, a minute ago you mentioned Floyd Turner, Floyd Turner, and Jermaine Jones. Floyd representing the 1988 Southland Conference Championship team tonight. Jermaine Jones representing the 98 Conference Championship team. In addition to being honored tonight, they were both honored earlier this afternoon. Two of nine folks that were inducted into the prestigious in-club Hall of Fame. Second and ten. Quick throw to the outside. Bubble screen is dropped and probably good that it was dropped by Jalen Watson as he was about really to be unreal, taken down by Coy Miller. Demons are throwing a lot of bubble screens because they feel like there's an opportunity to get yardage there. That one was thrown inside to Watson, but Coy Miller was right on top of it. And if Watson makes that grab, he goes down immediately for a loss of a couple. So now third and 10 for the Demons, who are five of eight on third downs. Good percentage, but that's a lot of third downs the Demons are having to to face. Three receivers right, one left. Big blitz coming up the middle. Good pocket. 
deep out. That's caught by Kendrick Price right at the sticks. I don't think they're going to give it to him, though. They're going to put it down a yard shy of the first down. It'll be fourth down and a yard from the 45. Demons are going to immediately go for it here. They bring in Kalen Meggs, the big tight end. Demons are getting set and ready to go. The umpire is going to hold the ball because the Demons substituted. And Houston Baptist is allowed to match substitution. So fourth and a yard from the 45, pistol formation. Fletcher hard count now checks the sideline. Tend to snap it. Everyone's in formation. Fletcher now barks at his offensive line and backs up into the pistol. Fourth and a yard from the 45. Fletcher going to throw it outside. That pass is caught. First down, Quan Shorts inside the 35-yard line. That was a flat-footed rocket from Caleb Fletcher to the outside to Quan Shorts for the first down. But that wasn't a very easy catch for Quan nope. Shorts. He made it look easy. He had to reach out and stretch to catch that one. Yeah, but that was Fletcher didn't even set his feet. He was literally, as, he, as soon as he made the catch, he turned and flipped it. That was all arm. An absolute rocket, flat-footed. That just shows you how good the arm of Caleb Fletcher is. Fletcher is the most gifted arm talent, as they say, on this demon team. First and 10 from the 35, rolling the pocket left. He's going to look down the outside. It's incomplete, and he knows he missed that one. Fletcher had Kendrick Perkins, Kendrick Price, rather, excuse me, on the deep corner. Price was wide open at about the 15-yard line, and Fletcher just put too much on it. That's one of the things he'll learn as he gets a little bit more game experience. You just need to put a little more air under that one, throw it a little softer. Price runs right under it for a gain of 20 in a first down. You and I were watching Caleb throw in pregame warm-ups, and uh, it looked like he just has one speed, throws it uh, really hard. It is a rocket. Second and 10 from the 35. 14-10 HBU, 7-15 left to go in the half. Handoff, cut over right, tackle Stadford Anderson. He'll get inside the 30 to the 29-yard line. Gain of six for Anderson. It'll bring up third down and four and some late pushing and shoving. And right in the middle of it is Demon right guard Chris Zirkel, who is immediately making his presence felt again for this Demon team. Zirkel, one of the things that Brad Smiley, is we have an injured player for HBU, one of the things that Brad Smiley talked media. about media. was how much of a leader and how much basically uh, chutzpah that Chris Zirkel has and how much he helps to uh, to put that on with the rest of the team. That The offensive line feeds off of what Chris Zirkel brings. And so uh, no surprise to see Chris Zirkel being the guy mixing it up after the play. And uh, Brad, Sir, Brad Smiley, great to have him back. And Tony, a great example of the new redshirt rule. Chris Zirkel will play the last four games of the season and be allowed to redshirt. He'll come back for a senior season. And by all accounts, Chris Zirkel has handled the fact that he's been physically unable to play for the first half of this season very well and that he has been almost like an extra coach for this uh, for this Demon team. He's been out here at practice. He's uh, trying to coach the guys through, trying to pass along his knowledge. But you know the competitor that he is, Patrick. He was just chomping at the bit to get back on the field, and it's good to see him out there. Absolutely. By the way, coming up at halftime, Tony will talk to the aforementioned Floyd Turner from the 1988 Demon team. Again, the 88 and 98 teams being honored in uh, this ball game, reuniting both championship squads. Third and four for NSU at the HBU 29 yard line. Demons trail 14-10 with 6.56 left to go in the half. Demons are five for nine on third downs. They didn't convert the last one, but then converted fourth and a yard. Blitz coming from HBU. Fletcher throws the fade pattern. Oh, he had a man open if he just Takes a little off of it. Quan Shorts runs underneath it for a touchdown. Fletcher overthrew him, though, as Shorts was just clearing from a little traffic up the right side numbers. And, boy, if Fletcher's able to just take a little off of that, Quan Shorts will settle under it, and he scores. And that's what we talked about, and that's something that Caleb Fletcher is going to have to work on and improve on. Some balls you can throw as hard as a rock, but some balls need a little more touch, and that one did. Demons are going to go for it on fourth and four from just inside the 30. Two receivers left, one to the right. Fletcher looks right, throws the slant incomplete. Was looking for Jalen Watson, but again, Fletcher just doesn't seem to have the capacity to take something off of it. He threw another rocket that went wide of uh, Jalen Watson. So. The Demons turn it over on downs at the 29-yard line. 
Trailing 14 to 10 with 6.49 remaining. They converted a fourth and one, but couldn't convert the fourth and four. Demons without the services of Shelton Epler, who has thrown for nearly 1,700 yards and 14 touchdowns this season. And uh, the Demons have definitely missed him last week, scoring 17 points against Central Arkansas and certainly could have used him here. You can't imagine the points they might have rung up on this one. Play action rolling right, throw to the middle of the field, caught by Stearns. He's got a gain of 13. Excuse me, it wasn't Stearns, it was Corey Seneceros who made the grab at the 42-yard line and a gain of 13. Shelton Epler having not cleared Oh, and Tony, yes. Tony, I want to mention this because for the first time all season, we see Christian Blewett come into the ball game. 5'11", 269, the junior from Beaumont, Texas. Blewett dealing with an injury all year long. Finally got to practice this week for the first time. He is in the ball game at that defensive tackle spot. Handoff over right tackle, big cut back to the middle. Ladarius Dickinson, uh, Dickens has great yardage, a gain of 13 into Demon territory at the 45-yard line. First down, Houston Baptist. Demons didn't know how much they'd be able to get from Christian Blewett in this ball game, but good to see him back out on the field, just like Chris Zirkel. A couple of linemen the Demons dearly needed to have back out. He'll immediately come out for big hummus, Joey McNeely, who makes his way into the ball game. 6'2", 291, the freshman from Kinder, Louisiana. First and 10 HBU at the Demon 45. 545 left to go in the half. Demon trail 14-10. Two receivers to either side. Zappy drops. Good pocket. Now steps up, escapes out to his left. He will cut it up the middle, and he'll be slung down by Quindarius Whitley after a gain of eight. Zappy ready to go. He's getting the defense lined up. Excuse me, getting the offense lined up and snaps. Quick throw to the outside is caught. Off a missed tackle, and to the outside goes Corey Seneceros. He's got the first down, just a little bubble screen. First down, and Seneceros takes it to the 32-yard line. But HBU, they move as fast as anyone in the Southland Conference. Their offensive coordinator, Zach Kitley, out of that Texas Tech lineage. And it's interesting, I was talking to Lonnie King, the play-by-play -play voice for HBU, and he said he was asking Kitley before the season, hey, what if you're trying to protect the lead? You know, do you slow down? He goes, we never slow down. First and 10 at the 32-yard line, pistol formation, handoff over left tackle, not much there. Great work inside by the Demon defense. Blake Stevenson is there. Well, Patrick, when Mike Lucas was putting together his defensive game plan for Houston Baptist, he talked to the folks down at McNeese, and he said they were really impressed by two things, the speed of HBU as they get up to the line of scrimmage, their quick pace, and B, the athleticism of their quarterback, Zappi. And uh, so far, they've been right on target. Absolutely, two receivers right, one to the left. Zappi has a 68-yard touchdown run in this one. Play action inside, showing the tunnel screen. It's incomplete. That play was blown up from the start. Rashawn Crony was actually taking down Jeremy Smith as the ball went by them. It was behind the line of scrimmage, so it's fair game or I should within the five yards of the line of scrimmage, so it's fair game. So now third and 10 for HBU at the Demon 32. Three receivers to the right, one to the left. HBU has converted two of four on third downs. Both teams at 50% third down conversion. Zappi claps, now checks back to the sideline. They like the play call. Demons with three down linemen and one in and up position. Zappi, inside handoff over left tackle, cutting it up is Mini Weather, and he's got the first down. Well, they ran it on third and 10. Quindarius Whitley had a shot to get the stop at about six or seven yards. He missed the tackle on Miniweather, and he was able to pick up 10 in a first down. That's a killer. And now NSU is going to take a timeout. Northwestern State has chosen to take the first timeout of the half. 30 seconds. After giving up a third down and 10 conversion, to the 22-yard line, the Demons will take the timeout. 4.13 left to go in the half, and NSU trails 14 to 10. Demons back into the uh, back end of the schedule here after facing those uh, three ranked teams in a row. Now have uh, Houston Baptist here, then at Abilene Christian in an afternoon game next week at 2 o'clock. Then back home for McNeese, a team that the Demons haven't beaten in a long time. We'll talk about that as the uh, season progresses. And then they finish off in the battle for Chief Caddo at Stephen F. Austin. So the schedule turns a little bit, Tony, but you would like to start it off with a win here against HBU. 
Yeah, that would be tough for Northwestern if they're not able to get out of here with a win against a team that has won just once this year. You got to go to Abilene Christian. That's never easy. It's and, not an easy trip. And ACU's been playing very well this year. And that'll be our first look at their brand new stadium mm -hmm. that opened last year. Interestingly enough, the stadium bears the last name of the starting quarterback. It's his family that donated the money for it. First and 10 from the 22, back split to either side of Zappi in the shotgun. Looks quickly left, throws quickly left, caught and falling to the ground for a gain of a couple. Give him three to the 21 yard line. That was Jeremy Smith. Down, excuse me, to the 19 two. yard line and a gain of three. It'll bring up second and seven. HVU, by the way, wearing white on white unis with white helmets. Demons wearing purple on purple unis, also with white helmets. Both teams wearing orange numerals. That's right. So second and seven from the 19-yard line. HBU leads 14 to 10, 340 left to go in the half. Play action, rolling right as Zappi under immediate pressure. Gets away from that, throws to the deep middle, wide open touchdown. Found Drashawn Manyweather on the scramble drill as he got away from pressure in the backfield, what looked like an, an initial sack and a huge loss. He gets away from it, and Dreshawn Miniweather wide open at the five-yard line and walked in for the touchdown. That's what we talked about earlier, Patrick, where Zappi runs to throw. He's very athletic. When he scrambles out of the pocket, he's not looking to run. He's looking to buy time and find his open receiver, and that's exactly what he did. Yet another big play given up by this demon defense, which has been such a struggle for them all season long, giving up the big plays. The extra point is good. 3.34 left to go in the half, and HBU has taken a 21-10 lead. We'll take a break. Come back with more after this. You're listening to the Demon Sports Network. Ladies and gentlemen, please direct your attention to the 25-yard line as we welcome back the Southland Conference Championship tennis team from 1988, which includes the 2018 in-club Hall of Fame inductee, Barbara Tons. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give the team a big team and round of applause. NSU Athletics and the Demons Unlimited Foundation would like to thank 3J's Four Way, Cypress Knee Outdoors, Domino's Pizza, Ice House, and the Royo Martin Lumber Company for their support. Wascom Brown and Associates trust the tax professionals in Natchitoches, Manny, Pineville, and Winfield. Scoring drive for HBU, they go nine plays, 71 yards, 315 off the clock. Bailey Zappi avoids a sack deep in the backfield and then throws to a wide open Dreshawn Miniweather, his back out of the backfield, who uh, return, who gets it in from the five yard line, all told a 19 yard pitch and catch. And NSU now trails 21-10, kickoff out of bounds, so the Demons will have good field position to start. Patrick, it is homecoming here at Northwestern tonight. You can't have homecoming without a queen and a king. Rebecca Altman is the homecoming queen. The homecoming king is? Chartarian Wilson. He's from Shreveport. Rebecca is from Mandeville. Is that Manga. right? Mango. Mango. My apologies. Mango. All right, Rebecca, what does it mean to you to be the homecoming queen? Something that can never be taken away from you. Uh, it's absolutely an honor. It's such a humbling experience to know that the student body chose me to be their queen for this homecoming game. It's an experience like no other, and it really just truly means everything to me. And uh, it is something that will never be taken away from me, and it's something I'll forever hold in my heart. After this play, Patrick. All right, first and 10 at the 35-yard line. This will be an inside handoff wrapped up in the backfield. Jared West does a great job to get a yard out of that, Tony. And to the homecoming king, we always hear about being the big man on campus. But when you're the 
big king on campus. I mean, what kind of attention have you gotten? What are some of the perks of being a homecoming king? Um, well, there's definitely a lot of perks, but um, overall, I just like um, to make those connections with people and for people to know that I'm just a, just a normal person just like them and being able to talk to them just like they can talk to anyone else is definitely something that I enjoy. But just letting people know that, hey, I'm just a normal person just like you and just to getting to know more people since I am homecoming king. A big honor for both of you. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you so much. Patrick. All right, quarterback keeper around the left side, and that's going to be a holding penalty Offense. against the Demons. Number 70, 10 yard penalty. Second Man, time that left tackle Jonathan Hubbard has been called for a holding penalty. So instead of third down and about four after the quarterback sweep around the left side for Caleb Fletcher, it's going to be backed up to the 24 yard line. It will be second down and uh, call it 24. From there, the Demons have been penalized now twice. Both have been holds against Jonathan Hubbard. So second and 24 from the 24. Excuse me, second and 21 from the 24. Fletcher going to step up in the pocket. He goes down in the backfield. Hit and tripped up from behind by Caleb Johnson, the blitzing linebacker off the outside. Third down. That will be a loss of two, the first sack of the ball game for HBU, a team that averages less than two sacks a game. They get Fletcher all the way back at the 25-yard line. The Demons now trail 21 to 10 with 2:20 left to go, and they are facing third and uh, third, excuse me, third and 20 from the 25. They have to get to the 45. Fletcher drops, throws to the deep middle, caught. Cutting back to the middle is LeVar Gums all the way across the field. He'll get up to the 41-yard line. So it's a gain of 16, but it's still four yards shy of a first down. And the Demons are going to be forced to punt it away. Right now, HBU on the verge of 300 yards in the first half. They're at 298 yards. They're averaging just under 10 yards a play right now, while the Demons are averaging under six yards of play. Parker Pastorello will punt for the second time. His first was 35 yards and down inside the 15. This one he might have to try to get a little more distance on and he will do just that. Fair catch called for and made at the 18 yard line by Jared Stearns. Parker Pastorello, Patrick, is uh, threatening the uh, the career record for average yards per punt in Northwestern. Absolutely. Uh, He's averaging just under 42 yards per punt. That one was right at 42 yards, as a matter of fact. The uh, school record was uh, Wayne Walker. How about this? This record has stood for a little while. 42.6 yards in 1965. <laughs> 53 years this uh, the record has stood for Wayne Walker. Who went on to play in the NFL. Absolutely, and uh, Pastorello now with that 42-yarder. He's right at 42 yards or just under 42 yards per punt. Zappi drops under pressure, throws to the deep middle. That one's incomplete. His arm was hit by OBE Oma as he let that ball go. And actually, the Demons might have had a chance to pick that one off if that ball was thrown with any uh, velocity on it. but. Because it was hit, because the arm was hit, it actually, I think, allowed HBU to escape an interception. Shamar Bartholomew made a break on the ball, couldn't get to it. Second and 10 for the HBU Huskies at their own 18. Three receivers left, one to the right. Foot on the gas pedal here. Leading 21-10. No, take a knee, and they'll get the ball to start the third quarter, too. Quick look, throw to the outside. Pass is caught. Tackle made as Cineceros goes down after a gain of four. Minute 10 left to go as the clock runs under a minute remaining coming up momentarily. Third down and six for HBU at their own 22-yard line. HBU is three for five on third down conversions. Three receivers right, one to the left. Zappi, fake count, now looks over to the sideline to get the play call. Now calls for the football. Inside handoff, cutting it up the middle. Not nearly enough for the first down. He actually did a great job of driving close to first down yardage. And Brad Northern. Laird's going to call his timeout with 41 seconds. Northwestern State has chosen to take their second charge time of the half. 30 seconds. And makes sense. You're going to get the ball back. You probably have a chance to get it back in reasonable field position here. As uh, it's fourth down and a little more than a yard at their own 27-yard line. You figure you'll get it in decent field position and maybe even get a Hayden Bourgeois nice return to set you up. 
at least try to find a way to put something on the board before halftime. Patrick, I met with offensive coordinator Brad Smiley in his office about an hour and a half or so before the ball game, and I'm going to tell you, he looked stressed. He looked like he has not slept much, and I asked him, I said, that's probably not a coincidence considering the issues at quarterback this week, and he said absolutely not. He just, uh, especially with the last four ball games, he just wants to try and find a way for these kids to be successful, and uh, it's really kept him up most of this week. The punt from Tyler Blanchard is short. Bourgeois will field it on the hop. He'll get a decent return, cuts it back up. He's into HBU territory at the 48-yard line. 49 is where they'll call it officially. So with 31 seconds and one timeout, the Demons do have an opportunity to put some points on the board here. You'd obviously love to find a way to score seven, but even three puts it back to a one-score game and gives you some momentum going into halftime. As reported, as number five for Houston back. So we'll see if NSU can find a way to generate some offense, maybe even get a last second field goal before the half ends. Remember, in college football, every first down stops the clock. That obviously helps. Three receivers left, one to the right. Jazz Ferguson is wide left. Wouldn't mind seeing maybe a throw one to deep to him and just see what happens. Fletcher in the shotgun. Calls for the football. Rolling left is Fletcher. Nowhere to go, throws it short. Bryson Bork, who's going to get what he can and then get out of bounds. Smartly done by him. A little late pushing and shoving out of bounds by Derek Broussard, the cornerback. But Bork gets four. That took seven seconds off the clock. As that was a waggle left, and Fletcher was looking to the deep out pattern. It wasn't there. So settled for the short pass, and Bork got four to the 45. Three receivers right, two to the left. Empty backfield. Fletcher drops, looks left, throws the out pattern. That one is caught. A nice job by Marquisian Chapman of getting out of bounds at the 41-yard line. It'll bring up third down and two. That third down. took four seconds off the clock. So now 20 seconds left to go in the half, and the Demons need two yards to convert the first at the 41-yard line. Two receivers left, three receivers right. Again, empty backfield for Fletcher. Five guys are back deep for HBU. The other six are all at the line of scrimmage. It's straight man all the way across. Fletcher looking quickly left, ball tipped at the line of scrimmage, and that's the problem with Caleb Fletcher. As Kyle Bowling knocked that one away at the line of scrimmage, that's the issue you run into with Caleb Fletcher, is that if you blitz him and a guy comes free, he can't necessarily throw it over the top of that guy. So now the Demons are going to go for it on fourth and two from the 41. NSU is one for two in fourth down conversions. Fourth and two from the HBU 41-yard line. 17 seconds left to go in the half. The Demons trail 21-10. Again, six guys at the line of scrimmage for HBU. Fletcher looks quickly left, throws it quickly left. Jazz Ferguson has the first down at the 35-yard line. Clock will stop for the chains to move. Demons either need to get on it and spike it or Get the play call and get going. Referee winds the clock, 15 seconds, and it starts to go. Fletcher changing things. He needs to hurry up and snap it. He does. Five pattern, five receiver pattern, throws it to the outside, and Chapman gets out of bounds at the 30-yard line. Gain of five. This would be a 47-yard field goal from here. There's seven seconds left to go on the clock. Seven seconds is right on the line right. as to whether you have a time to throw you've, a play or not. You've right got to get you've got to get something quickly, get your time out, and then try to kick a field goal. Fletcher again, empty backfield, three receivers right, two to the left. This time there's just five guys at the line of scrimmage for HBU. They have six, five about ten yards off the line of scrimmage, and one sort of in a rover. Now he'll move up to the line of scrimmage. So six guys coming on this one. Fletcher looking quickly left. He'll roll out of pressure. He needs to get rid of it. He's going to fire deep to the end zone. Jazz Ferguson, but he's out of the back of the end zone, and the half expires. Ruling on the field is an incomplete pass. Third down. Uh, the half has ended as Fletcher rolled out, saw Ferguson break open deep. He heaved it to him. It was a great pass, but Ferguson made the grab and was pushed out of bounds and could not get his foot down. 
and therefore the Demons will not be able to put points on the board before halftime. Brad Laird makes his way over towards uh, Tony Tagleboards. The Demons trail 21-10 going into the locker room. Tony? Coach, how disappointed to not at least get three out. Well, disappointed early on not to get three when you miss a field goal. I mean, right there in that situation, I was just glad to be able to get the ball down there, get a shot to one. I'm disappointed in earlier when we had opportunities and didn't take advantage of it, giving up two big plays back to back right there. You know, we just got to do a better. We had opportunity on third down right there on the sack when they get the last touchdown. So, 30 more minutes left. We're going to keep fighting. What are some of the key adjustments you need to make here at the half? Well, I, I think continuing our drives offensively. You know, we've been able to move the ball. We missed a field goal, went for it on fourth down uh, once we got down in that area. We just got to convert when we get down there, whether it's field goal or seven points. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. H&R Block in Natchitoches in Manny. All new Legacy Dodge, Chrysler, Ram, and Jeep on the bypass in Natchitoches. So the Demons will kick off to start the second half. HB will have the ball first. Demons trail 21-10 as uh, the Huskies multiple big plays in that first half. They had a 68-yard touchdown run from Bailey Zappi, a 34-yard pass from uh, to David Racine, and then the broken play, the busted sack that uh, Zappi escaped and then hit Drashawn Miniweather for 19 yards and a touchdown. Straight up the middle of the field goes the kickoff return. Jamar Valson will take down the return man at the 26-yard line. Tony? Well, Patrick, during halftime, we talked with Floyd Turner, who is representing the 1988 Southland Conference Championship team tonight. Now it's time to talk to a man on the other side of the ball, Jermaine Jones, who represents the 1998 Conference Championship team. Jermaine won the Southland Conference Player of the Year and all Louisiana Defensive Player of the Year honors while he was at Northwestern State. Does it seem like it's been uh, that long ago since you did all that? It actually does seem that long. It's, I can't believe it was almost 20 years since that, that time. So, But I truly thank, thank everybody at Northwestern, uh, Coach Goodwin and all the players that I played with to make that happen. It was, it was a lot of hard work. I'm really going to say it was a lot of hard work. Now, when you come back to a game like you are tonight and you stand on the sidelines and watch, is there a part of you that says, you know what, I, I, I could still do that? Yes, it actually, you actually take a different approach. You take the mental approach. Take a strong mental approach to realize that your body is not ready. So just play it in your mind. Look at the, the receiver's positioning and the down and distance and what you probably would have done if you was on the field. Don't go out there, though. <laughs> Patrick, you want to call this play? All right, so uh, first down, they ran to the right side. Obi Ioma got a tackle from behind. Second play, they ran the bubble screen to the left and picked up nine yards. It's now third and a yard as uh, HB in the first half converted three of six third downs. They'll look to try to convert this one as uh, the Demons would like to get off the field here, trailing 21 to 10, a minute gone by in the third quarter. And a huge honor, Patrick, for both Jermaine and Floyd. Earlier today, they were inducted into the prestigious in-club Hall of Fame. How much did that mean to you? That was awesome. It was truly awesome to, to, to come here and uh, being away for 20 years to see Coach Goodwin and the players, and again, to share that with my family, my wife, my mom and dad, brothers. That was truly awesome. I enjoyed that a great deal. Quarterback keep around the right side. Ball comes free at the end, but they're going to say Bailey Zappi was down. He was running speed option right. He got just Rolling enough for the, the field, first down. The quarterback was down prior to the fumble. First down. He got a, needed, needed about a yard. He got a yard and a half. Jermaine, congratulations on uh, all that you're being honored with tonight. Thank you again. I just thank you guys again for everything. Thank you very much. Patrick? So first and 10 HBU at their own 38-yard line. They picked up a third and one on a speed option right. Zappi kept, didn't get much, but got enough. Receiver in motion to slot right. This will be a handoff over right tackle. There's nothing there. Boy, Khalil Sumlin, O'Shea Jackson just rocked Drashawn Merriweather, who lost his helmet. 
and he will have to come off the field for a play. Well, he's, yeah, he, he, he's supposed to come off the field. I don't think he did. He got absolutely – no, it was actually uh, Ladarius Dickens who got, who got the handoff. He got absolutely rocked. His helmet came off, but he stayed on the field. Oh, it was an NSU player. Well, they're both white helmets. Straight drop for Zappi under pressure. Down he goes. Obi Ioma comes away with the sack, his fourth of the year. Back at the 35-yard line, a loss of three. Finally, Ioma gets free. Third down. Ioma leads the Demons with four sacks. Senior from Grand Prairie, Texas, last year had eight sacks. So trying to catch those numbers as he's got his fourth now after that one. It'll bring up third and 13 from the 35. Fourth sack of the game for the Demons. Three receivers left, one to the right. Hayden Bourgeois showing blitz off the offense's left side, but he goes back out over that three receiver side. Zappi calls for the football. Looking to set up the screen, floats it ahead to the right side. Some running room there and a first down. They set up the screen right and Drashawn Miniweather was able to carry it around the right side. And it's first and 10 HBU at the Demon 49. They're gonna throw the bubble screen. It was almost intercepted, but a flag down. And the play is stopped as we have a false start call against HBU. They move so false fast. Start. Offense, number 78, five yard penalty. Made first down. So back them up from the 49 back to their own 46 yard line. Patrick, as soon as we get a break in the action, we're gonna visit with another inductee into the in-club hall of fame. A class of nine inducted earlier today. First and 15 for HBU at their own 46 yard line. Two receivers left, one to the right. Zappy with back split to either side of him. He'll fake inside, run the speed reverse, coming around to the left side, nowhere to go. Demons play it perfectly. It ends up being no gain as they ran speed option right and then flipped it on the reverse to Jareth Stearns, and he had nowhere to go and actually lost a yard. It'll bring up second and long now, second and 16 back at the 45-yard line. Great job by the Demons not falling for that. Hayden Bourgeois stayed at home and made sure that did not turn into a big play as they went speed option right and then flipped it on the reverse left. So second and 16 at their own 45-yard line. Backs again split to either side of Zappi. He drops, blitz comes, throws across the middle. No one there, incomplete. Tony? Patrick, you do not have to be an athlete, a former athlete, to be inducted into the End Club Hall of Fame. Jerry Pierce, one of nine people inducted earlier today. And I'm going to tell you, I don't know of anybody that is more closely associated with Northwestern State University than Mr. Pierce now in his 53rd year. Jerry, what has it meant to you to be so closely tied to Northwestern State? Well, Tony, uh, you know, they, I, they gave me this honor today, and my honor has been to work here at Northwestern for 53 years and get to know so many great people, so many alumni and students and faculty and, and, and athletes and coaches and administrators. That's what has made these, these years so special. This is a great, unique place, as you know, and, and the people that make it great are, are the folks who, who are associated with it. So what I've tried to do over the years is get good, surround myself with good folks and kind of stay Number five, and that's, uh, Houston Baptist has reported at number six. Well, Tony, on that third down in, fi in 15, Bailey Zappi escaped pressure, rolled to his right. Looked like he had a clear window to roll, run out and get the first down, but Quindarius Whitley tripped him up at midfield. It's now fourth and 11 from midfield, and HBU is going to be forced to punt. High snap to Tyler Blanchard. A low line drive kick. Bourgeois fields it. He didn't call for the fair catch, and he goes down at the 15-yard line. Mr. Pierce, uh, for much of your time here at Northwestern, you were the man in charge of uh, getting the good word out about Northwestern State to uh, media all over the state, all over the country. What was your main message? What did you want people to know the most about Northwestern? Well, I think what we wanted to do was just just let people just uh, let people see Northwestern, hear about Northwestern, because it, it if they come here, if we can reach them and get them here, they're sold. As you know, this is a it's a wonderful university and. I tell you, I, I've never been uh, more blessed in my life than I had than I was to have the opportunity to come here. When Coach Jack Clayton brought me here as a student trainer, taking taping ankles back in the 1957, and you know, it was the only way I could have gone to college. I was from a little old town, didn't uh, just didn't have any opportunity to go to college. And so this place 
uh, it's just been such an important part of my life and it's changed my life completely. And I've told folks today that you know, all these years, I would, uh, if I had to all do over, I'd do it again, you know. And I'm guessing it warms your heart to see what institution Northwestern State has become. Fantastic. Largest enrollment ever this fall. It's uh, everything, great academic programs, athletic and teams, and, you know, really good teams, really good people, good staff. So it's, it's been a, it's a great, it's a great honor to be here. I'm tickled to death to be here. Congratulations on being inducted into the In Club Hall of Fame, and thank you for all you've done. Thank you, Tony. Well, Tony. Patrick? A high snap right over the head of Caleb Fletcher. He picks it up at the goal line and throws it straight sideways. It's going to be intentional grounding. Was it in the end zone? If it was in the end zone, it's a safety. If it was outside the end zone, it's going to be a spot of the foul all the way back at the inside the one yard line plus a loss of down. It would be second down at the one. The Demons ran it on first down. Uh, Jared West got 10 and a first down to the 25-yard line. And then the snap from Kenny Sheldon sailed uh, way over the head of Caleb Fletcher all the way back to the one. He picked it up. He rolled. He would have been better off just trying to run it. Instead, he threw it away. Was it out of bounds? Off it, number two. The foul occurred at half-yard line. Lost it down, the bottom foul. All right, so it did not occur in the end zone, which is lucky for the Demons. It ends up being intentional grounding on Caleb Fletcher at the half yard line, a loss of 24 yards. That's the second week in the last three that the Demons have had a 24 yard loss. Well, actually last week, sorry, last Correct. week. It is third down. Last week, no, it's, it's second down. It's not third down, it's second down. The That was the first play. It was first and 10 from the 25. So it should be second down from here. It's the loss of down, so it should be second down. Second down. There we go. So the Demons got 10 on the run from Jared West, and then the snap over the head of Fletcher. Second time the Demons have, a, have had a 24-yard loss on a snap over the head of the quarterback. Demons need the 35. It's second and 34 from inside the one. Fletcher looking quickly left, throws quickly left. Jalen Watson makes the grab. He gets it out across the five and to the seven, maybe the eight yard line. So a little breathing room for NSU. But it's still third and 27 for NSU after the Demons had gotten the first down on their first play. They held HBU. They got a sack, their fourth of the ball game. Almost had their fifth on the last drive and then got a first down on their first run and now it's third and 27 from the eight. Fletcher drops. Quarterback draw, he'll get it up the middle, cut it back to the left, looking for a hole. He will get across the 25 and out to the 27 yard line. So he's still eight yards shy of the first down, but he does pick up about 20 yards on the run. And that will give Parker Pastorello a little bit of extra room to punt this one away. But that's what Caleb Fletcher does really well, isn't it, Patrick? Yeah, Run unfortunately, unfortunately, I'm, I'm not sure if that snap from Kenny Sheldon, if Shelton Epler or Drew Bledsoe or Manute Bowl would have come <laughs> up with that. And actually, the first guy that's meeting Kenny Sheldon when he comes off the field is offensive uh, line coach Jay Pond talking to him very briefly. Pastorello to punt this one away. A very poor punt by his standards. Fair catch made at back at the 40 yard line. Then he runs with it. That's a penalty. You're not allowed to call a fair catch and then try to run with it, but he did just that. Did HBU's uh, Gamar Gertie Time Brito. Media. We have a timeout on the field. 8.29 left to go in the third quarter. Remains 21-10, but very good field position for HBU when we return on the Demon Sports Network.
Arklatex Foot and Ankle Specialist, 505 Royal Street, Suite B in Natchitoches, with locations in Shreveport and Bossier City. For more info, visit them on Facebook. First Federal Bank of Louisiana, your bank for life. Just the second time these two teams have ever played. HBU just getting into the league a couple of years ago. Vic Sheely in his fifth year at the helm of HBU brought them into the Southland Conference. Sheely's won just 10 games and just four in Southland play in five years. So it'll be a handoff, OBE Oma again. Nope, actually Zappi keeps around the left side and he will be wrapped up and thrown out of bounds with a gain of 13 and a first down. And he comes up limping slightly as Shamar Bartholomew slung him down and HBU wants to move quick. So Zappi has to quickly get back behind the uh, line of scrimmage. Three receivers left, one to the right. Inside handoff, huge hole up the middle for Drashawn Manyweather. He will take it inside the 20 and down to the 15 yard line. Gain of 33 right up the gut for Drashawn Manyweather. HBU is going to sub in, and so the Demons automatically do the same. That is an automatic for NSU if the opposing team, especially these tempo offenses, if they sub, the Demons automatically bring a new defensive lineman in to try to slow things down a little bit, give a little bit more time for the call. First and 10 from the 15, three receivers right, one to the left. So be play action. Zappi's going to throw the fade, throws it over everyone's head incomplete. Nowhere near his intended receiver, David Racine. Good coverage down there by the freshman Shamar Bartholomew, who picked up two interceptions a couple of weeks ago against Sam Houston. Yeah, this defensive coaching staff is really high on Bartholomew. Remember, he is just a true freshman. Got his first start two weeks ago against Sam and had those two picks. Second and 10 from the 15. Two receivers to either side. Zappi makes motions to either end. Mike Lucas changes his play call. Zappi drops and looks right, throws across the middle. Wide open touchdown. No one anywhere near Ladarius Dickens out of the backfield. And Houston Baptist breaking this one open. They lead 27-10. Dickens. Mike Lucas looks back over it as yeah. <laughs> the guy's on the sideline just has his arms out as if to say, well, I don't know. I, somebody missed an assignment somewhere because Ladarius Dickens came out of the backfield and just ran straight down the middle of the field with no one near him. Coach Lucas let out a, a big scream when he saw that pass being completed. The extra point is up and it is good. 7.31 left to go in the third quarter and HBU has opened up a 28-10 lead on Northwestern State and the Demons just cannot get anything going Time offensively the Media. against the worst defense in the Southland Conference. We'll take a break. Demons down 28-10, seven and a half left to go in the third. You're listening to the Demons Sports Network. Steins is proud to support NSU student athletes. Congratulations, Darian Raymond, for being the Steins Superstar of the Game. And thank you to our sponsor, Ivan Smith Furniture, for donating a $100 gift card for one lucky winner tonight. Text Demons to 40213 for a chance to win. That's D E M O N S to 40213 for a chance to win a $100 gift card courtesy of Ivan Smith Furniture. Porter's Fine Dry Cleaning says a regular dry cleaner doesn't offer pickup and delivery. A fine dry cleaner will. That's Porter's Fine Dry Cleaning. Sabine State Bank with a location near you. Kickoff. Miles Ward will field it at the seven-yard line. Left side numbers. He'll take it to the sideline. He's got a little bit of a crease there. Breaks a tackle. Still driving forward and near the 40-yard line. So a good return for Miles Ward. Uh, the Demons redshirt freshman kick returner. Third in the uh, Southland Conference coming in, averaging just under 25 yards a return. 
Scoring summary for Houston Baptist. Four plays, 57 yards, took less than a minute. A 15-yard completion from Bailey Zappi to Ladarius Dickens right down the middle of the field. Zappi is now thrown for 232 yards, three touchdowns, no interceptions. And Northwestern State in a world of trouble right now, trailing 28-10. First and 10 at their own 38. Two receivers right, one to the left. Quan Short's in motion, now to slot left. They're going to throw the bubble screen back to Jazz Ferguson. He'll go out of bounds with a gain of nearly six, and then a flag comes flying in from the, the side judge on the far sideline. He threw that from forever away. And you wonder if this may be it's going to be a hold against the offense, it looks like, against Quan Shorts. Holding. Offense, number six. In your pen from the spot of the foul. Second down. So the Demons get a positive play of seven yards, and it ends up being a holding penalty. Demons have only been penalized now four times, but it seems like they've all come at critical junctures, and that's kind of been the story of the year for the Demons. As NSU has uh, been hit with about nine and a half penalties a game, 82 yards in penalties a game, both of those in the bottom three of the conference. Play action, rolling right is the quarterback Fletcher. He'll throw to his tight end, and a great job by Kalen Meggs of getting right to the first down marker. And let's see if they give it to him. He's right at the marker, and they will. First, first down, down for NSU on second, or excuse me, first and 13. Fletcher rolls right and finds Kalen Meggs, the tight end, for just his fourth catch of the year, and he does the rest. Shotgun snap, quick throw. Jalen Watson catches it and falls down with a gain of two. Patrick, something very interesting here on the Northwestern sideline. As you know, after each uh, change of possession, Mike Lucas, the defensive coordinator, comes over and talks to his defense. Well, as you can imagine, he was very vocal in expressing his displeasure with them on that last Houston Baptist drive. He really, really was yelling at basically two players in particular. And then I think he felt a little bad about it because after about 45 seconds or a minute, he came back over to the group and told them, I want to win this football game. Don't you worry about me yelling. Keep your head up. Caleb Fletcher in a world of trouble and throws it away, gets it past the line of scrimmage and was out of the pocket, so no intentional grounding that time. Is it again, There's it was, no foul for intentional ground. The quarterback was outside the pocket. Ball was line of scrimmage, third down. And again, it was a delayed blitz from Houston Baptist that led to that incompletion. So now third down and eight for NSU at midfield. The Demons are five for 13 on third down conversions. They are 0 for 1 in the third quarter. Six minutes left to go in the third. Demons trail 28-10. Offense needs to get very efficient in a hurry. Caleb Fletcher wanting the offensive line to get down. There's only two to snap it. Calls for the football. He's going to quarterback draw. This one spins in the middle. He's got the first down. What a heck of a spin. About two yards downfield. He spun in the hole and cut it back up the middle, and he's got the first down at the 39-yard line. And a great job by Caleb to hold on to the football because an HBU player was coming in from behind. His sole purpose was try and strip that football loose. He got his hand on it and tried to knock it away, but Caleb would not let go. First and 10 for the Demons at the HBU 39-yard line. Two receivers left, one to the right. Fletcher. Quarterback keep around the right side this time. He will get to the sideline and get what he can. Gain of uh, four, it looks like. Gets it to the 36. It was actually a gain of three. I thought they gave him the 35. So call it second and seven for NSU. Haven't really seen Jazz Ferguson targeted much. He's got four catches for 37 yards. You figure they might take a deep shot. They had the one right before halftime, but he was out of the back of the end zone as time expired. Two receivers left, one to the right. Fletcher drops, looks immediately right, throws the out pattern. There's Meggs again, the big tight end, and he's got the first down. So Kalen Meggs, the senior from Richmond, Mississippi, picks up his fourth and fifth catches of the year on this drive, and first downs on both. So first and 10 Demons at the HBU 26. Two receivers left, one right. Again, quarterback keep around the right side. Fletcher turns the corner and goes out of bounds with maybe a yard. So that was just quarterback sweep to the right. 
Here's your understatement of the year, Patrick. Imperative yeah. that Northwestern score a touchdown on this position. That's a, it's a pretty good understatement, Tony. I think I think you did well. They're going to actually give Fletcher no gain on the play. Northwestern down 18 with 440 to go in the third quarter. 28-10, and HBU's offense doesn't show any signs of slowing down. They average 35 points a game. Two receivers left, one to the right. Fletcher's going to bring Jazz Ferguson in motion, tighter to the line of scrimmage, roll to the left, looks to the outside, throws to the outside. There's Markeesian Chapman who's got it. He goes out of bounds inside the 20 at the 19-yard line, so a pickup of seven. It'll bring up third and three. Demons just converted a third down. Two on this drive, as a matter of fact. Actually, excuse me, they converted one third down on this drive with Kalen Meggs. The Demons set to go. Two receivers right. That's the wide side of the field. One to the left is Jazz Ferguson. Third down and three from the 19. Quick throw to the outside caught by Chapman. He'll get up the right side. He's got the first down and down to the 10-yard line. He'll give him the 11. Call it a gain of eight. First and 10 for the Demons at the 11, doing it with the short passing game here. NSU's longest pass play from scrimmage was the 51-yarder from, Se from Sears to Watson. The longest pass play for Caleb Fletcher is 16 yards. The Demons have not been able to get anything deep against this umbrella-type coverage for HBU. Two receivers left, one to the right, Fletcher. Fakes the inside handoff. That's a touchdown. Slant pattern. Jalen Watson comes up with the grab. A much needed score for the Demons. Same pass that actually Jalen Watson caught and took to the house from 51 yards. That one he caught the quick slant from 11. And NSU has cut the lead to 28 16. Much needed offensive drive there for the Demons. Austin Fendrick's extra point is on the way and good. 3.33 left to go in the third. Demons have cut the lead to 28-17. Give you the drive summary as Northwestern State goes 10 plays, 62 yards. It took three minutes and 49 seconds off the clock. Ended with an 11-yard pass play from Caleb Fletcher to Jalen Watson. We've got a timeout on the field. Timeout on the field. 3.33 left to go in the third. Demons down 28-17. You're listening to the Demons Sports Network. When in town to see the Demons, be sure to stay with our friends at Hampton Inn on University Parkway near Interstate 49. Enjoy a clean and fresh Hampton bed and free Wi-Fi and wake up each morning to their free hot breakfast. Hampton Inn and NSU football, a dream team. So please direct your attention to the video board and congratulations to today's Posey's Tailgater of the Game, the NSU Black Alumni Alliance. You are the chosen as tonight's Posey's Tailgater of the Game. And they're still all out there. Southern Classic Chicken in Natchitoches, Manny, and Mansfield. Let New York Life secure your family's future. New York Life, the company you keep, Nettles Brown, the agent you trust. So the Demons go down the field. They score the touchdown to Jalen Watson, his second receiving touchdown of the ball game. One from Kenny Sears on the first drive, one from Caleb Fletcher. Kickoff fielded at the six-yard line around the left side, trying to come back outside. And once again, Jamard Valson makes the stop. We have called his name a ton in special teams on that kick coverage. But, Tony, you mentioned for the offense it was imperative. They went down and scored. They did. Now for the defense, they've got to find a way to slow HBU down. They've only forced two punts, excuse me, three punts. Uh, no, yeah, three punts in this ball game for the Huskies. Well, we knew this HBU offense was good and could score points, and they've done so tonight. But now that the Demons have pulled to within 11, you've got to find a way to stop Houston Baptist and get the ball back. It was 21-10 at halftime, and both teams have now scored seven. 
Three receivers right, one to the left. Tailback to the left of Zappi. He'll get the call, cuts it right back up the middle. Valson will make the tackle again after a gain of eight. And HBU is moving incredibly fast. They're sprinting to get in place. They're going to run a little trick formation here. Lineman to either side, handoff up the middle. And Nate Nanai initially with the hit in the backfield. Then flags come flying in as Drashawn Miniweather got the handoff. Nanai is going to get called for illegal participation here. He lost his helmet and then continued to play and tried to make the tackle. It's a, it's a penalty of effort, but it is a penalty. It'll be illegal participation against the Demons and a first down for HBU. Sometimes we've seen that called where really the player, there's no way you could expect the player to yeah. stop when the helmet well, I mean, came off. That time, Manai, if he would have been thinking and aware of the rule, he probably had time to stop. Yeah, the problem is he's the only guy out there with the running back. Personal foul, continuing participation without a helmet, defense. It's a 15 yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic first down. You know, it's a player safety rule. I think it's punitive, to be honest with you. I don't like a 15 yard penalty for that. Uh, you know, Nate and I is out there just trying to make a play. His helmet comes off. It's him and the running back in space alone. He's not going to just stop and let the guy go by him. So I wish that was a five yard penalty. Even if you wanted to put an automatic first down on it, fine. But I think 15 yards is awfully punitive for that penalty. Two receivers right, one to the left. First and 10 from the 41 now. Back split to either side of Zappi. Handoff over right. Tackle nowhere to go and a tackle for loss. Loss of two back to the 39-yard line. Setting the edge was Rashad Powell, the redshirt freshman from Houston. He'll pick up the tackle for loss. Now four and a half tackles for loss for him. I will tell you that is a scary sight when you're down here at field level and you see a player playing without a helmet. No doubt. End for a tackle. Sure, there's no doubt about it. Again, and it's a player safety issue. I don't mind the penalty. I just think 15 yards is a little too much. Demon's going to blitz inside. Zappi's going to throw it on the check down. It's caught. Kevin Ratliff will body slam the receiver, Corey Seneceros, after a gain of a couple. They'll give him nearly six. And it'll bring up third down and six for HBU at their own 45-yard line. Great opportunity for the Demons to get off the field. Three receivers right, one to the left. Zappi claps. Demons show corner blitz from Shamar Bartholomew. Mike Lucas is going to change the play after that dummy call. Zappi's going to drop. He's going to swing it out to the outside. One-on-one. -on -one. Tackle not made, but the second one is. Great job by... The corner, Shamar Bartholomew, after the initial hit was missed, I believe, Tony, was that Valson who missed it initially. Bartholomew came in and cleaned it up, and the Demons get off the field defensively. That is a huge stop. Number 64. I mean, five has reported there's 64. That's uh, HBU's wide receiver, Terry Tillman, who puts on a 64 jersey because there's already a number five on the punt team. This one hangs high and deep. Hayden Bourgeois calls for the fair catch and fumbles it out of bounds at the 13-yard line. Well, luckily, he was right up against the, uh, the out-of-bounds line, so if he was going to fumble it, it wasn't going anywhere inbounds, and so the Demons will take over at the 13. But, Tony, that was what they needed. The Demons needed a stop. Now let's see if the offense can continue to roll like they did on the last possession. Caleb Fletcher looked a lot more comfortable for whatever reason on that last series. Looks like he's found his rhythm, hit a couple of passes back to back. Let's see if it carries over. 150 yards passing for Fletcher on 20 of 31. So again, not finding anything deep. But we talked about Brad Smiley saying, look, HBU has changed their defensive philosophy. They're not going to get beat deep. They've got safeties back. They're playing umbrella coverages down the field. Handoff up the middle. Boy, Fletcher should have kept that one on the read option. Instead, it's a loss of two back to the 11-yard line as he handed it off. Jared West was met in the backfield. If Fletcher keeps that around the left side, he's got good yardage. But he didn't, he didn't read it. Greg Vincent in the backfield for Houston Baptist. Yeah, he didn't read it. If he had pulled it and went around the left side, he's got probably five or six yards. Instead, it's second and 12 from the 11. Two receivers to either side. Shotgun for Fletcher. 
Looking quickly right, throws quickly right. Jalen Watson has it. He'll get across the 15 to the 16-yard line. Patrick, you talk about the style of defense Houston Baptist is playing this year. Uh, Brad Smiley was saying, really, that is favorable for Northwestern tonight because when you're playing inexperienced quarterbacks like Northwestern is tonight, you don't want to have a defense that is really in your face, that plays that in your face style. Houston Baptist doesn't do that. They sit back. Third down and a little under eight. Fletcher drops, looks right. Now back to the left. Blitz comes. He stays in and throws it too high, intended for Jazz Ferguson. Not very often you can throw it over Jazz Ferguson. He had his hands on it up high, but couldn't quite pull it in. But Patrick, we got to compliment Caleb Fletcher, who's walking off a little slow and holding the area under his right shoulder. I'm telling you, he knew he was going to get hit and hit hard, and he stayed in there until the very last second, and he did take a shot. And uh, threw it just a little bit high for Jazz Ferguson, unfortunately, and so the Demons will go three and out after their defense got off the field. 21 seconds left to go in the third quarter. NSU trails 28-17. Parker Pastorello gets away a beautiful, long, spiraling punt, fielded at the 45-yard line. A 40-yard punt for Parker Pastorello, but again, good field position for HBU near midfield. and. The Demons will try to get off the field again defensively. So far, HVU now over 400 yards of offense right at their average. They average 403 yards a game, 120 on the ground and 283 in the air. They've got 166 on the ground and 240 in the air. Meanwhile, the Demons have 328 yards of offense, 107 on the ground and 221 through the air. The Demons are still the number one passing offense in the South of Conference as a team. Three receivers right, one to the left, first and 10 from the 44. Zappy inside, handoff right up the middle. Big running room for Drashawn Miniweather. He's got 15 yards to the Demon 41-yard line. Excuse me, that was Ladarius Dickens who made that run. And again, HBU moving quickly here. Three receivers left, one to the right. They're going to fake the bubble screen, throw to the middle, tipped and almost intercepted. Was looking for the inside move from the left side receiver, that was Trevor Larkin, the junior from Crosby, Texas. They fake the bubble screen to the outside. Houston Baptist loves to fake the bubble screen and then throw down the field. They fake that one. Larkin, a little too high for him, though. Three receivers right, one to the left. Zappi throws immediately to the right side. Pass is caught. Two demons there. Ball comes free. NSU's got it back at the 45-yard line. They. Forced the fumble from Jareth Stearns and Hayden Bourgeois with the recovery. On the final Roll play of the field. third quarter. With the catch, fumble, recovered by Northern State. First down, and at the end of the third quarter. So Nick Ford gets the turnover trident for, trident for forcing the fumble. Hayden Bourgeois recovers, and we head to the fourth quarter. Northwestern State, big play defensively. Down 28-17 after three, you're listening to the Demons Sports Network. Well, let's take a look at our video board for the play of the game sponsored by Natchitoches Regional Medical Center. Motors in Manny. We have it all. They also have it all at Julian Foy Motors and Jimmy Grange. Mackinish Ford Lincoln. First and 10 for the Demons after the fumble recovery. Demons have it at their own 46. Two receivers right, one to the left. Fletcher in the shotgun with a back to his right. Corner blitz comes. Fletcher under immediate pressure, and he will be taken down for a loss of six back to the 40-yard line. 
Big blitz from HBU, and Fletcher goes down. Second sack allowed by the Demons, and he had no shot at that one. Basically, as soon as he dropped back, as soon as he started to look down the field, he saw in white shirts coming right up the middle at him, and he had no chance to dance away or do anything else. He just had to go down. Second and 16, now back at the 40-yard line. Three receivers right, one to the left. Fletcher, corner blitz comes. He throws it out to the right side. Pass is caught by Quan Shorts. He'll cut it up the middle, get across midfield and to the HBU 49-yard line. So picks up 11 on the bubble screen to the outside. It'll bring up third down and six. This HBU defense gives up an average of 488 yards a game. The Demons are at 333 right now. Demons are moving quickly. Roll out left Fletcher. He's going to throw it underneath to Bryson Bork. He's going to have to do this on his own. He'll push the pile forward up the left sideline, but he won't be near the first. Well, he'll be near the first down. He's two yards shy. It'll bring up fourth down and two. Demons have gone fourth for down. it. Demons have gone for it three times on fourth down and converted two of them. And they're going to go for it on fourth down here again. Fourth and two from the HBU 46-yard line. So if you don't convert here, you're giving good field position to the Huskies. Minute 20 into the third, uh, fourth quarter in the Demons Trail 28-17. And now Brad Lair is going to be forced to call a timeout. Brad Smiley actually came out well, about State four yards on the field the first time on the half. and was mad because seconds. whatever play he called or whatever he was looking for, the uh, offense wasn't lined up correctly. He tried to get the play switched, and instead the Demons called timeout with a minute and a half gone by here in the fourth quarter. And Tony, the Demon defense getting the turnover. NSU coming in plus eight in turnover margin. They're now plus 10 after they picked up their eighth and ninth fumble recoveries of the year to go with 11 interceptions. They're top five in both interceptions and fumble recoveries in the Southland and top 20 in both categories nationwide. And none of that is by accident, Patrick. We've talked about it several times this season. Mike Lucas uh, really focuses on teaching his players on defense how to force turnovers, to uh, fight aggressively for tip balls, that type thing. You combine that with the fact that Houston Baptist is very prone to turning the ball over, it's no surprise the Demons have a couple tonight. Fourth and two for the Demons at the HBU 46. This will be a straight handoff right up the middle, and Jared West is fighting for it and does not have it. He goes down with a gain of a yard, and HBU will get the ball back on downs. The really on the field is the Rutgers tackle short of the line of game. First down. Facing the second worst rushing defense in the Southland Conference, giving up 212 yards a game. The Demons try to run the ball up the middle on fourth and two and get one. And HBU takes over at their own 45-yard line. 13-23 left to go in the ball game. The Demons trail 28-17. Demon offense just totally different without Shelton Epler at the helm. Shelton is on the sideline and street closed tonight. First and 10 at the 45, two receivers to either side. Zappi drops, he's under pressure, steps up and runs. Huge crease up the middle, 35-30. He'll slide down at the 29-yard line, a, a gain of 31 on the run, on the scramble by Bailey Zappi. And once again, right up the middle. That time it was not a design run or even a read option. That was just him escaping pressure. And a lot of times what will happen is if you play man on the outside and the Demons play a lot of man, the DBs are turned the other way looking to follow their receivers and so no one's watching the quarterback. First and 10 at the Demon 29 yard line. Demons show blitz from the left side of the offense. They throw it to the outside on the bubble screen. Cutting it up is Jareth Stearns and he's got five to the Demon 24-yard line. Bailey Zappi has now run for 115 yards on 11 carries. Quickly to the line of scrimmage, they're gonna throw the bubble again, and that's just dropped. Flat dropped on the outside by his receiver. That was Jareth Stearns, no, excuse me, that was Cineceros. Cineceros on the outside just dropped it, and he had David Racine blocking in front of him. 
And now to bring up third and five from the 24. Normally you'd think this would be comfortable field goal range for HBU, but they have their field goal kicker slash punter was dismissed from the team a couple of weeks ago. Demon show blitz up the middle. It was a dummy call there for HBU. Mike Lucas is going to leave his call alone. Quickly the swing pass to the outside is caught. Tackle is made short of the line to gain. Great job by Blake Stevenson getting out on Ladarius Dickens and stopping him a yard shy of the first down. But I believe Vic Sheely will probably go for this. With the kicking situation the way it is for HBU, I've got to imagine this will be a go for it scenario for Vic Sheely. Big confab of coaches on the far sideline. And now they're going to bring in a couple of subs. So the Demons will sub, and they're going to do it slowly. Joey McNeely will come in. Power set here for HBU. They're going to bring in a couple of tight ends. The play clock's down to three, down to two, down to one, and a timeout by Vic Sheely. Vic Sheely ran down all the way to the line of scrimmage to call that timeout. That's the first charge of the half. 30 second timeout. 11.53 left to go. The Demons are on the road next week, heading out to Abilene to take on the Abilene Christian Wildcats, who are off this week. An afternoon game, right? An afternoon game, 2 o'clock, out at the uh, brand-new stadium. Looking forward to uh, seeing the new edifice. I got to actually see it during softball season last year. Uh, right after it been, was built, it was it's right across from the softball field. So I got to go check it out. Beautiful-looking facility, and... Uh, they no longer have to use that multi-purpose facility that the high schools use. By the way, some scores from around the conference. Nichols pummeled Incarnate Word 48-21. Sam Houston beat Southeastern 28-25. Lamar, the hot team, taking down Stephen F. Austin 24-17. And McNeese leads Central Arkansas 20-14. Nine minutes left to go in the third. And Tony, you know what's significant about that McNeese game? What's that? LSU head coach Ed Orgeron oh, yeah. down there yeah, to yeah. watch not only his receiver son, Parker, but new starting quarterback for McNeese, Cody Orgeron. They yeah. made that move this week. James Tabery out as the starter. Cody Orgeron is in. Fourth down and a yard from the 20. Looks like quarterback sneak for Zappi. He's right up under center. He'll just sneak it up the middle. Doesn't get anything. No, he didn't get it. No, sir. The demons repel. HBU on fourth and a yard. The quarterback sneak goes sideways. His offensive line got absolutely no push at all. Damian Thompson up the middle. Zach Krolchik. Ruling on the field that the quarterback was tackled for a line of game. Just down. So the North Demons turn it over on downs on their last possession. And on fourth and a yard, HBU tries the quarterback sneak. And they get stoned. And now NSU will take over first and 10 at their own 20-yard line, 11.49 left, trailing 28-17. But the offense, which has gone in fits and starts so far this, uh, this ball game, needs to get going a little bit, get some cohesion. Three receivers right, one to the left. HBU showing blitz here now. Fletcher looks quickly to the outside throws and in an <laughs> absolute spear right to the, to the solar plexus of Quan Shorts right as he made the grab for a loss of a yard. Patrick, if Northwestern rallies to win this ball game, let's remember that defensive stand on fourth and one. Shorts is going to come off the field. He got absolutely, I mean, that looked like a Roman Reigns spear from the WWE. As Shorts got hit with a shoulder, it was a clean hit right to the chest and taken down immediately, second and 11. So the inside handoff, Stadford Anderson breaks a tackle, and he's got the first down across the 30. Needed 11, got 11. First and 10 demons at the 30-yard line. NSU over 100 yards rushing, which has been a, a, a sticking point for this demon team. They come in averaging 85 Whoa, yards rushing a game. There. there is an injured HBU player. But uh, Demons throwing for 318 a game. That's number one in the Southland, number six overall, but just 85 yards rushing a game. Last week had 26 carries for 32 yards. But again, remember, just like tonight, NSU had a snap over the head of the quarterback, which went for a loss of 24. Same thing that happened tonight happened last week. 
So the Demons really ran for about 60 yards in that game, uh, which is not a bad number against Central Arkansas. Meanwhile, here they've really run for about 135, but uh, only have 113 on the board as of now. 11-10 left to go, and the Demons needing to find a way to make up 11 points. Demons will go two receivers left, two to the right. Caleb Fletcher has gone the distance since the first two series of the ball game. First and 10 at the 30, three-man rush. Good time, Fletcher throws the deep slant, that's caught. Jalen Watson out to midfield. Watson has been the uh, big target in this one. Into HBU territory and the Demons are lined up and ready to go. Three receivers left, one to the right. Fletcher drops, three-man rush again, plenty of time. Going to throw it to the side, uh, to the numbers right side, caught by Quan Shorts for a gain of 11. And first a first down. down. Demons continue to move fast here. HBU trying to sub. Demons do not have to give them time to sub because they did not sub themselves. Fletcher drops, blitz comes. He steps up in the pocket, pump fakes. He's going to escape out to his left. He's going to try to turn the corner and then go out of bounds. Good gain on the play, though, as he gets to the 32-yard line. A pickup of six on the improvisation by Caleb Fletcher. Demon offense moving a little bit here now. The, the times that HBU has brought three and dropped eight, Fletcher's eaten them alive. When they've brought pressure, that's when they've had more success against Fletcher. Demon offense nearing 400 yards of total offense in this one. HBU at 450. Two receivers right, one to the left is Jazz Ferguson. Second down and four from the 32. Blitz up the middle. Good pocket. Fletcher pump fakes. He's going to throw to the deep middle. Wide open is Ferguson inside the 15. Hit hard and dropped at the 13-yard line. Jazz Eight of 19. A, Jazz took a shot to the head that time. Didn't phase him. He's already back lined up wide left. Two receivers right, one to the left. That's Ferguson. First and 10 from the 13. Fletcher drops, three-man rush. He's going to throw the fade, looking for Ferguson. Got it! Jump ball, you're not going to beat number one, Jazz Ferguson. 13-yard touchdown. Demons are back in it. Really on field and touchdown. Jazz was calling for the football as soon as it was snapped. I mean, he knew. He had one-on-one. -on -one. That's when he thrives. Fletcher just laid it up perfectly and let Jazz Ferguson go get it. For Jazz, that is his seventh receiving touchdown of the year. Second most in the Southland Conference, and the Demons are going to go for two here to try to make it a three-point ball game. Ball at the three-yard line right in the middle of the field. Two receivers right, one to the left. They throw another fade. Now we're going to get a stoppage of play. Please set the play clock to 25 seconds. They're going to put the play clock back to 25. 9.34 left to go in the game. Thank Demons you. have cut it to 28-23. That touchdown coming on a drive after the Demon defense stopped HBU on fourth and one. Absolutely. So two receivers right, one to the left. Ferguson across the formation in motion to slot right, a roll right, looking, looking. Fletcher going to just lob it up, and it's intercepted in the end zone. They can actually return it out for a two-point conversion if they wanted to. Fletcher got absolutely slammed after uh, he tried to come in and make a play. It returned out to about the 20-yard line. So the Demons are down five with 9.34 left to go. They tried a little roll right. We're trying to clear someone into the corner and couldn't find anyone Coming available. On the field. Nine. 9.34 left to go. Northwestern State has cut the lead to 28-23. You're listening to the Demon Sports Network.
Swepco. Stay safe and keep away from power lines. Visit Swepco.com. French Market Express, University Highway at I-49, home of Louisiana Yam Cake, and Sheriff Victor Jones in the Natchitoches Parish Sheriff's Office. Drive summary for Northwestern State. The Demons go seven plays, 80 yards, 215 off the clock. Jazz Ferguson from 13 yards on the jump ball. You're not going to beat him at that. And the Demons have cut it to 28-23 after they missed the two-point conversion attempt. This return stopped shy of the 20-yard line. Patrick, during that timeout, Northwestern State head coach Brad Laird came over to his offensive unit sitting in benches on the sidelines, and he was telling them, fight for 30, fight for 30. Remember what we talked about, fight for 30. I've got to believe that at halftime, Brad Laird's message to his team was, we've got 30 minutes left, we're going to fight for the entire 30 minutes. Well, remember, as he, as you interviewed him coming off the field, he said, we've got 30 more minutes to go get it. So he, uh, he is definitely not a guy that's going to get too high or too low. He, he sets a nice even keel. First and 10 from the 19. Zappy, quick throw to the outside. Pass is caught. Tackle is missed, but then... Stumbling, Hayden Bourgeois makes the stop of Jareth Stearns at the 28-yard line. It's a yard shy of the first down. And HBU is going to move quickly to get to the line of scrimmage and get this snap off. Second and a yard from the 28 to be an inside handoff right up the middle. Huge hole there for the tailback, Ladarius Dickens, and he's got it to the 47-yard line. And again, the Demons just getting hammered by big plays. HBU lining up quickly again. They'll snap it again. They'll hand it to Dickens again. This time he stopped for a gain of two, just shy of midfield. But already HBU near to midfield with 8.50 left to go in the game. Demons trailing 28-23. HBU already snapping it. Drops. Blitz comes. Under pressure. Rolling out right. He's just going to lob it. That ball did not get to the line of scrimmage. No, it didn't get to the line of scrimmage. Third down. Oh, the linesman a gift. That sure didn't look like it made it back to the line of scrimmage as, as uh, Zappi just threw it away. And now it'll be third and eight for HBU at their own 49-yard line. A huge opportunity for the Demons to get off the field here defensively. Three receivers left, one to the right. Third and eight from the 49. Oh, left guard moves. Left guard rocked back in his stance. Ball start. Offense in the 75. Five-yard penalty, third down. That was Hikoti Chapman, one of a pair of twin brothers who were the guards for HBU. Tuita Chapman and Hikoti Chapman. And that was Hikoti Chapman who got called for the false start. So now third and 13 for HBU at their own 44. Got to get off the field here if you're the Demons. NSU, three down linemen. They'll bring five on a delayed blitz. Plenty of time now. It breaks down. Zappy up the middle. He'll try to cut it up. He's got the first down. Goodness gracious. Bailey Zappy again escapes the pocket under pressure and gets the first down. He's pretty good. Well, he just, he's just so elusive. Demons late lining up. Zappy drops. He's going to throw the fade pattern up the left side. It's incomplete. Good coverage by Rashawn Crony on David Racine. And it'll bring up second and 10. Zappy's just elusive. He just finds a way to get away. He's run for 132 yards in this game. Coming in, Zappy had 101 yards rushing on the season. He's run, he's more than doubled that tonight. Demons have just been victimized by him getting it up the middle. Three receivers right, one to the left on second and 10 from the Demon 39. 818 still left. Demon's down five. Inside handoff. Hit in the backfield and dropped. It's Jamar Valson again on the stop of Drashawn Miniweather. And that'll bring up third and 10 from the 39 and another opportunity for the Demons to get off the field. Boy, Jamar Valson, the freshman from Port Arthur. We have called his name a ton in this game. Special teams and also defensively, now Valson's going to drop back into coverage. Three down linemen for the Demons. They show a six-man blitz here. As Zappi checks the sideline on third and 10 from the 39. Three receivers right, one to the left. Zappi drops. Pockets, good. Throw to the deep sideline. It's intercepted! Coming down the left sideline. And a huge hit out of bounds. Drashawn Miniweather. Absolutely clobbered. I believe it was Malik Sonye. It was. Who had the interception. 
And that could be targeting, and Brad Laird immediately started screaming for targeting on Drashawn Miniweather on the hit out of bounds. But Tony, the interception by Malik Sanye, his first of the year. And it happened right in front of me, Patrick. The reason for that interception is because the quarterback Zappi and his intended receiver were not on the same page. Zappi thought the receiver was going to continue running to the outside. Instead, the receiver turned it up inside, and Malik Sanye was there to intercept it. They might look at this, Tony. I just like watch the replay. When Miniweather came in to make the stop, he definitely lowered his helmet at the helmet of Malik Sanye. But regardless, the Demons get the ball back. The third turnover forced by NSU. So the Demons are now plus 11 in turnover margin, and HBU is minus 9. Demons have it first and 10 at their own 45. 7.31 left, down 28-23. Three receivers right, one to the left. HBU showing big blitz. They come. It's an inside handoff. Creased right up the middle, Jared West. He'll take it inside the 40 and down to the 38-yard line. Well, sometimes if you blitz big, it's a big play for you. Sometimes if you blitz big, it's a big play for them. That time it was a big play for the Demons. Quick throw to the outside's incomplete, almost intercepted as Alfred King jumped Jazz Ferguson on a little quick hitch route. Pass was thrown so hard that Alfred King had no shot at it. But he dove and tried to make a play. It'll bring up second and 10 from the HBU 38-yard line. Keep in mind, Demons missed the two-point conversion on their last touchdown, or else a, a three would tie us here. Instead, it's a five-point deficit. Two receivers to either side, shotgun for Caleb Fletcher. Second and 10 from the 38. Fletcher drops, three-man rush. Good pocket, throws to the deep middle, wide of Jazz Ferguson. He was expecting Ferguson to be a little bit more towards the numbers than he was, and threw it incomplete. Jazz gives you a big target, doesn't yeah, he? Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it's hard to miss him. You have to be off target quite a bit to miss Jazz Ferguson. That'll bring up third and 10 from the 38. This is definitely four down territory, depending on what the Demons do here. I think if it's fourth and five or less, they probably go for it. Three receivers now right. Fletcher, quarterback draw coming from him. He will cut it up, spin, and he is short of the first down by two yards. Down to the 30-yard line. The spin got him off balance a little bit. Fourth down. And forced him to fall just shy of the first down marker. Demons are going to move fast here on fourth and two from the 30. Fletcher in the shotgun. Just a quarterback keep over the left side. And he's got the first down. Good hard running by the sophomore quarterback from Mesquite, first Texas. Down. Northwestern State. That was just straight quarterback run over left guard. And Fletcher picked up the two in the first. First and 10 at the 26. 640 left to go in the ball game. The Demons trail 28-23. Inside handoff over left tackle West. He'll cut it up and he'll get to the 22-yard line. That's a gain of four. You think Caleb Fletcher doesn't want to win this ball game for more than one reason? Now yeah, there's a there's a lot of reasons. As we mentioned, he was not given the start today because of a disciplinary issue. Ended up sitting for two series and then coming back in, trying to lead the comeback. Three receivers right, one to the left. Big blitz, hand off to West. He's hitting the backfield and goes down after a loss of a yard. Even though Caleb set the first two series, though, this game has really belonged to him. We haven't seen Kenny Sears back in the ball game ever since Caleb came onto the field for the third series of the ball game, it's been his. By the way, there's a new there's a uh, new right tackle for the Demons, Brody Griffin, 6'5", 272, the junior transfer from Generette out of New Mexico Military Institute. So he's seeing his first action. He's at right tackle. Third down and seven from the HBU 23. Two receivers left, two to the right. Fletcher talking to his offensive line as he backs into the shotgun, west to his right. Four to snap it. Calls for the football, four-man rush. Good pocket, throws to the deep middle. There's Jazz Ferguson. He'll get it inside the five to the four-yard line. He almost bounced off the he defender and scored. Almost. That's why I kind of got a little bit <laughs> got, got a little bit more excited because he spun off two defenders and looked like he was going to keep his balance and score. Now it's first and goal from the four for the Demons. 5.07 left to go. NSU trails 28-23. 
Brad Smiley is trying to call a different play. He screamed to get Caleb Fletcher's attention and gets the play call in. Receivers one to either side. Do you throw another fade to Jazz here? Fletcher. Yep, there's the fade. Jazz Ferguson can't make the grab, and there is going to be a flag. That's going to be pass interference in the end zone. Well, really not much that Alfred King could do at 5'11". Number two, that foul for the end zone. The ball placed at two. We got our rule. Our man first down. They actually called it on the safety, Patrick Wolf. I believe it was on uh, Alfred King, though. But there's not a lot that King can do. At 5'11", 175, he's just outmanned against the 6'5", 220-pound Jazz Ferguson. It really is unfair. <laughs> So first and goal from the two after the pass interference penalty. 4.46 left to go. Team is down 28-23. Pistol formation. This will be a handoff up the middle to Jared West. He'll push the pile for nothing. No gain on the play. Second and goal from the two. Demons have run it for 151 yards. They've now thrown for 317 yards, which is right at their season average. Caleb Fletcher, a career high, 251 yards passing, two TDs. Wonder if you take another shot at Jazz at some point. Second and goal from the two. They're going to do it again. Throw the fade. Back of the end zone. Jump ball. Guess who? Touchdown, Jazz Ferguson. Well, Tony, he's unfair. I'll actually quote the sports editor of the Shreveport Times, Scott Farrell, who upon seeing Jazz Ferguson against Grambling said, Media. said this kid is going to be unfair to the Southland Conference. 4-12 left to go. We'll take a break. Demons lead 29-28. They'll go for two when we return on the Demons Sports Network. Dedication. Boy, you still in words. It's our commitment to you. We strive to help you become who you want to be, who you can be. You will graduate from Northwestern State University and care how cool the hair for you. The university experience for more than 130 years of flesh and lays on focus to your future. Northwestern State University, dedicated to one of the yours. Cane River Bar and Grill and Cross Financial, sponsors of the Demon Huddle. Barksdale Federal Credit Union, join the winning team and experience what it's like to have a financial partner for life. Demons going for two after scoring to go up 29-28 with 4-12 left. They're going to go just inside the left hash. Three receivers right, one to the left. They're going to throw the fade again to Jazz Ferguson for two, and he's got it. One more time, Jazz Ferguson, and the Demons take a three-point lead. Tony, if you didn't hear it before, I'll quote Scott Farrell again. He's unfair. Jazz Ferguson, eight catches, 90 yards, two touchdowns, and a two-point conversion. The NSU offense likes to talk about, Brad Smiley loves to talk about the 50-50 ball. He said, if we're throwing it up to our receivers, especially Jazz Ferguson, it better not be a 50-50 ball. That's more like a 90-10 yes. when you throw it to Jazz. Absolutely. So Jazz Ferguson makes the grab, and the Demons suddenly are in the lead for the first time since it was seven to nothing. Take a look at the uh, scoring summary for that one. 10 plays, 55 yards after the Malik Sanye interception. Jazz Ferguson, the two yard touchdown. In the fourth quarter alone, Jazz Ferguson has picked up a pair of touchdowns. <laughs> Patrick Jazz, Jazz comes over to the bench 
And uh, the crowd, which you know is in close proximity, the yeah. stands to the Northwestern bench, <laughs> a big group of them just gave him a standing ovation. Well, he's, he's hard not to like, Tony. By the way, Jazz Ferguson will more than likely, I mean, unless barring injury, Jazz Ferguson is going to be the single season receiving yardage leader. The record is 944 by Nathan Black. Jazz Ferguson right now has 852 yards. He needs 92 yards to tie Nathan Black for the most yards in a single season, and more than likely he will be the first ever 1,000-yard receiver in NSU history. He may get that tonight. <laughs> At the five-yard line, the return out across the 20 for Ladarius Dickens. Tony, let me give you the fourth quarter numbers right here. HBU has 82 yards of offense, 64 of that on the ground, and most of that is the quarterback Bailey Zappi. Meanwhile, the Demons have put up 142 yards of offense here in the fourth quarter. 470 yards for NSU on an astounding 85 plays. HBU has just 20, excuse me, has just 68 plays, but they are nearing 500 yards. Demons lead 31-28 with 4.07 left. First and 10 at the 24. Three receivers right, one to the left. Zappi, inside handoff, nothing doing there. Damian Thompson. Gain of two, and Damian Thompson is high-stepping a little bit as he makes that stop. The sophomore from Gadsden, Alabama. Six tackles coming in. Called his name several times tonight. Second and eight from the 26. Three receivers right, one to the left. Zappi calls for the football. Looks immediately left. Going to try to throw the screen. It's a one-handed grab, and it goes backwards. Again, Damian Thompson, the defensive tackle, comes all the way out to stop the screen for a loss of two, and it's third and 10 from the 24. Hayden Bourgeois lost his helmet. He's got to come off for a play. Demons will replace him, Ryan Reed and Nick Ford. And now we see uh, Kyle Moore is in in that star safety position. Third and 10 from the 24. Three receivers left, one to the right. Zappi in the shotgun checks the sideline. They like what they have. No change in the play call. Demons with three down linemen, but three guys dancing around the line of scrimmage. Throw down the right sideline. That one is incomplete. Shamar Bartholomew makes the play. And the Demons hold HBU to three and out. And the Huskies will be forced to punt with 3.07 to go. How about the Demon defense and the true freshman, Shamar Bartholomew from New Orleans, man to man down the sideline and did not allow the completion to Gamar Gertie Brito. So Hayden Bourgeois is back in, had to sit for a play for his helmet coming off. He'll stand at his own 35-yard line. Tyler Blanchard, the redshirt freshman, will punt it away. This punt, low and spiraling. Bourgeois calls for the fair catch and makes it at the 38-yard line. Well, now, Tony, with three minutes left, the Demons are in their four-minute offense. With a 31-28 lead, the four-minute offense is when you're trying to run out the clock with a lead. You're going to see the Demons slow the pace way down. Brad Smiley won't even give play calls in until probably there's 15 seconds left on the play clock. And they practice that four-minute offense a lot. Yeah, we saw them do it against Lamar to win that ball game after they had blocked the extra point. They needed to run the last couple of minutes off the clock and did just that. So the Demons have the lead, 31-28, with exactly three minutes left. First and 10 at their own 38-yard line. I wonder if HBU will change defensive tactics a little bit and be a little bit more aggressive with their secondary, figuring the Demons may run a bit. Inside handoff, Jared West on the cutback. He will get it across the 40 and then be pushed a few yards forward. They'll keep pushing him forward all the way to the 45-yard line. And HBU is going to take an immediate timeout, and that, they'll actually give him the 46. That's, a, that's an eight. First the half. That's an first second timeout. Eight-yard run on first down when Jared West had about four on the initial play, and then the line got in behind him and pushed him for an additional four. Well, you like second and two. That's in back to second timeout. They have one remaining. And HBU has one timeout left, so the scenario really is one first down and the Demons can not salt the game away, 
but they can certainly go a long way to squeezing the time down to where HBU won't have much in the way of time to score. Worth remembering also, Tony, that the Demons were down in this ball game 28 to 10. Mm -hmm. They've scored the last three touchdowns unanswered. And this rally really got kick-started. Remember, Patrick, when HBU had the ball fourth and one mm -hmm. deep in Northwestern territory and the Demons held. You even said, mark that down as a big play in this game, and it certainly might turn out to be that way. Second and two from the 46. Two receivers right, one to the left. HBU has everyone at the line of scrimmage. Jared West will get hit in the backfield, but he'll drive forward and lose only a yard. And that will be the final timeout for Houston Baptist. Houston Baptist. Houston Baptist has shown to take the third and final time of the half. I've got, to, I've got to imagine, Tony, on third and three from the 45-yard line, if you're NSU, you, you probably have to get Caleb Fletcher on the move here. Don't you think? Probably maybe getting him, get him out of the pocket or maybe even, you know, a quarterback run of some kind. But I've got to imagine if you put Caleb Fletcher on the outside and give him a run-pass option, you've got a good chance to pick this up. Remember in that Lamar game, on third down, the Demons allowed Shelton Epler to throw it outside to Jalen Watson. Watson made the grab because it was the correct read and then went up the field, got the first down and slid down and that pretty much allowed the Demons to run it out. The next play, they did get a 40 yard run for Jared West. West, by the way, 17 carries for 76 yards in this one. Demons have run for 158. Biggest three yards of the ball game right here, third and three from their own 45. HBU showing big blitz. It's a run to the left side. Fletcher, he cuts it up, and he's got close to first down yardage. Where do they mark it? They got it. First down, Demons. At the 48-yard line is exactly where he needed to get, and he did. First down, NSU. Really on the field. Unbelievable individual effort by Caleb Fletcher with Jazz Ferguson blocking in front of him. Fletcher gets around the left corner, breaks a, a little arm tackle in the backfield, and then surges forward for three and a first down. And now, Tony, with no timeouts left, let's work the clock here. 40 seconds off puts you under two minutes. Another 40 seconds puts you at 120. Another, they're going to measure here, but I, I don't think it's even close, to be honest with you. It's uh, the, most of the ball is past the 48-yard line, which was the line to gain. Demons can almost just kneel on this at this point. So they're going to measure, but I believe this is all but academic. Yeah, it's not even close. It's a full length of the football. So the Demons, 239 away from picking up their second win in Southland Conference play and breaking a four game losing streak, coming down from back from 28-10 down. This would be a massive win for NSU. But Tony, you do the math, just if you just assume you kneel on it every single time. Kneel it on the first down, the clock goes under two minutes. Kneel it on second down, the clock goes down to a minute 20. Kneel it on third down, the clock goes down to 40 seconds. And then you've got to figure out what you're going to do after that. So technically, you need a first down if you're going to actually run the clock out. But you can get to, you can put so little time on the clock left at HBU, it'll basically just squeeze them out here. But first, you've got to handle everything correctly. Got to get the snap, got to get the exchange, whatever you're going to do. Demons are not in victory formation, so... There is not going to be a kneel down here, and, and understandable. They're actually going to let the clock run as the clock started. Three, two, one. Fletcher just going to keep it right up the middle. He dives forward to the 50-yard line. A little late pushing and shoving. You certainly don't want to get a penalty here. Chris Zirkle, not surprisingly, in the middle of it. So the clock moves under two minutes. You can, if you're the Demons, run the clock to about a minute and a half here. They actually got a gift on the, that last play. The, the officials started the clock back up because it was a running play with Caleb Fletcher picking up the first down on third and three. They stopped the clock for the injury. When the injury got off the field, they re-ran re the clock. 
So the Demons got an additional 15 to 20 seconds off the clock. So three seconds remaining. And two and one. Fletcher again just going to keep right up the middle. He'll dive forward just across midfield. So now the Demons will run the clock down under a minute. It'll be about 55 seconds or so, 45 seconds or so. And you wonder if the Demons may run it down to a, a second on the play clock and take a time out here. They've got two left. Yeah, you may not. You may just want to run it down, go ahead and take your, take your second time out, and then figure out what to do. The Demons are going to get to the line of scrimmage. With three, with two. Fletcher calls for the football, just keeps around the left side. He uh, shakes off a tackle and then falls down for a loss of a couple. Back to the original line of scrimmage. Well, the 40-second clock didn't restart. This game's over. Game clock at 33. No, the 40-second clock never went, that went, went on, so NSU has won this game. They do not have to snap it again. This ball game is over. Northwestern State will break the four-game losing streak, coming back from 28-10 down to win this one, 31-28. Absolutely incredible by NSU. Now the referees are going to stop things. Please place 43 seconds on the game clock. 4-3. So they're going to place the play clock at 40. All right, so there's going to be a three-second differential between play clock and game clock. If I'm Brad Laird, I run the play clock all the way down to one. 43 seconds. Three. So they're going to put 43 seconds on the game clock. They're going to put the 40-second clock back to 40, and they're going to start them both. There will be a three-second differential. If I'm Brad Laird, I run it down to one, call a timeout. I tell Caleb Fletcher, when you take the snap, run around for three seconds and fall down, and the ball game's Please over. Play. 43 seconds on the game clock. Still Four, struggling to get the three. game clock set, set back clock to 43. To 40. They we'll start both on my ready-to-play signal. So if I'm Brad Laird, I just take the time out with one second. I instruct my offense, instruct Caleb Fletcher. When you take the – all right, now we're good. We've got 43 on the game clock, 40 on the play clock. The head referee is now waiting to wind both of them. He wants the offense back on the field. Now they'll wind both. And again, all Caleb Fletcher has to do, you can actually get into victory formation here. And I think Brad Laird's probably going to call the timeout with one second on the play clock. And he, and here's the other thing, Tony. Remember how Brad Laird talked about initially when he hired Mike uh, Lucas I knew you were and Brad that. Smiley because they're both yep. previous head coaches. And well, he's got both of them on either side of him right now discussing strategy. Yep. The too. strategy is, here is, Tony, it's easy. You get in the victory formation, you snap it to Caleb Fletcher, you tell him to spin around a few times until the clock runs to zero, and then you fall down, game's over. Two great resources to have and two former head coaches. Not that Brad Laird couldn't make his own decision, but it's always great to, to have a, a couple of guys in your ear that have been in this situation before. All right, so the uh, time out on the field. Laird takes North the West time West. out with one second three, left. Three, so they're gonna put, they're the gonna put the game clock three back seconds, to three please. seconds. And again, Line up in the victory formation, snap it to Caleb Fletcher, run backwards for 10 yards Thank if you, you want to. It doesn't matter. Just waste three seconds and fall down, and the game's over with. All you have to do. And so, so now the Demons have three seconds left before they can snap the four-game losing streak. If this score holds and the Demons can allow and uh, run out the last three seconds, Houston Baptist will have lost their seventh consecutive ball game after winning game one, and the Demons will have broken a four-game losing streak. All right, so the Demons are going to line up. All Caleb Fletcher has to do is run around for three seconds and fall down, and this ball game is over. Now, I'm a little surprised they're not in victory formation here, putting someone back behind Fletcher just in case the ball goes over his head or some, something goes awry with the snap. Fletcher's going to run. He's going to juke to his right. He's going to fall down. That's your ball game. Demons have won it. Ball game. Northwestern State has broken its four-game losing streak, coming back from 28-10 down. 
to win 31-28 over Houston Baptist.